Hey, All right, welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a good lunch. Uh, best day to come back to the witness answer. Yeah. Dad, I just missed the case. Oh. <laughs> All right, uh, Joe, you ready to jury? Yes. Ray Michigan? Yes, sure. Yes. Just, All right, also, you can bring Aaron. <laughs> All right, you may be seated at the State Bank College. Yes, sir. Wait, Thomas Jones. So wave, Your Honor. Wait, Thomas Rogers. Welcome back, everyone. We are ready to now resume the direct testimony of Investigator Lafler. Sir, do you understand you are still on the road? Yes, sir. And Judge may continue direct. Thank you, Your Honor. Investigator Lafler, I believe, when we left off for lunch, were you finishing up there at Green Hill before you went to conduct the interviews that were in your uh, investigation? Yes, sir. Uh, and how many people, if you recall, did, did you send or take, have taken up to the police department for interviews? From Green Hill, sir? Yes. Uh, I, I believe it was three people that we had. Okay. And you recall the names of those individuals? It would be Kevin, uh, Kevin Iron, uh, Christopher Bassett, and then it was also Larry. And which, you know which order you interviewed them in? If I'm not mistaken, I, I believe I spoke to Larry North first. And was in the course of that interview, uh, was Mr. North again cooperative with you? Yes, sir. He was. Did he answer the questions that you posed to him? Yes, sir. Now, who was the next uh, interview you had? If I'm not mistaken, it was Mr. Ireland. Mr. Ireland? And was Mr. Ireland cooperative with you? Yes, sir. He answered the questions you posed to him? Yes, sir. And lastly, would it be Mr. Bassett? Is that correct? I believe so. I believe that's the word. Uh, and before we, and we're going to show that interview, uh, before we get to that, uh, I want to ask you about uh, some of your techniques in interviewing persons of interest, if I could. Yes, sir. What is minimization? What is that? It, it's where it, if you're in a fight with somebody and we have proof that we got, we got kicked when he was down on the ground. <coughs> we, don't, we don't bring in the kicking on the ground part, we bring in the fight. And all you did is fight. You didn't kick him when he was on the ground. And sometimes they have, they will admit to those minimal things that they did, but not the the, the harsher pieces that they, they were involved. In. And before we get to that, I meant to do this with, uh, when I asked you about Mr. North. After the interview with Mr. North, did you have occasion to take a photograph of text messages that appeared on his phone? Yes, sir. We did. And I believe that's been uh, introduced in the exhibit. If I could display that, I want to ask him a couple questions about that. And is this uh, exhibit 553, the picture of the text message that you took? Yes, sir. And whose phone was that? This was from Larry Moss phone. And I want to ask you about the time because the text messaging references yesterday, is that right? Yes, sir. And specifically this one right here. And what date was this picture taken for that would show up as yesterday? Uh, on the 18th. 18th, so yesterday would be the 17th? Yes, sir. At 7.58 p.m.? Yes, sir. And we've heard testimony from Mr. North that that was a text from Mr. Colbert, is that right? That's correct, sir. Now, the, the interview with uh, Mr. Bass, did you read his rights? Mr. Bassett, yes I did. And all that will be captured on, on the recording as well, is that correct? Yes, sir. And generally, when you started asking him about what he knew, generally, what, what were his responses? Uh, referring to the Lawndale uh, homicide, he wasn't there, he didn't count. Is what it started off at. Did you talk with him about the shooting of what turned out to be his aunt, his aunt? Yes, Lisa Perry, on the Dallas shoot. Yes. Did you talk to him about what, how that made him feel? Yes, sir. Yes. And what did he do? And, and he, he was upset and angry at him. And did you talk with him about going to, um, well, with Mr. Perry from there, that location, over uh, to Green Hills? The, yes. Uh, after that, um, they, they got together and they went to the Green Hill, Hills area, as you said. Now, you say that he, as far as Lonsdale was concerned, he initially said he wasn't there? That's correct. Didn't know anything about it? That's correct. Did there come a time that he changed that? Yes, sir. At what point 
in the interview. Uh, during the interview, um, we, we talked about, of course, Lisa Perry. We also talked about Brandon Perry. Uh, after we got, I got done talking to him about those instances, we, we turned our attention to the long death. Um, and from there, we, during the interview, he started to admit that he did go out there and he didn't know about it. And during that part of the interview where he, he changed his, as far as his involvement, was there, did you talk with him about uh, what you knew about him being there? Yes. Okay. And including ways to determine that he was there? Yes. And, and of course, GSR came up. Uh, and that's the gunshot residue on, on his hands. Uh, we also, I also indicated that there was video there. Okay. And what about tracking of his cell phone? Uh, yes, and we, we also used the uh, comments of tracking his cell phone, getting GPS off his cell phone to tell us where he had been. Now, after you talked about those things, is that when he started to change? Yes, sir. Uh, his version of what happened? Yes, sir. And generally, after that happened, what did he say? Uh, in, in general, he, he says he, he went out there uh, with Mr. Perry. Um, they, they walked into the Lonsdale Homes area. Uh, they came upon some people on the back porch, and Mr. Perry began to shoot. At that point, he began to shoot, but he, he indicated that he was shooting high above, uh, above their head. Did he tell you what type of gun he had? He did. He, 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 he told me he had a 40 caliber Glock. Glock. Is that semi-automatic? It is semi-automatic. Did he tell you what kind of gun Mr. Perry had? He did. He, he said that Mr. Perry had a revolver, 357. And as we've heard, those would not leave shell casings unless... No, I, I think he can ask questions, but exactly. he's... Thank you. Okay. And are you familiar with, with uh, revolvers? Uh, yes. Um, so he, 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 he finally said he was there but shot up in the air, is that correct? Well, you're on shot a, same same shot objection. Same uh, what did he say about yeah. shooting at those kids? He, he said he shot in their direction but high. Okay. All right. So if we can... The uh, fight approach is yes. what Ben Mark is good for him to do. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a copy of the rights waiver that I actually read, Christopher Bassett. And when I, when I read somebody the rights, I ask them to initial decide each number as I read it, and I indicate to them it's not giving up that right, it just tells me that they understood what I've read to them. Like number one reads, you have the right to remain silent. And if you understand that, I asked them to put their initial side just to tell me they understood that. And when I did that, he, he indicated on all five of the rights that I read them that he, he, he initial one saying that he understood what I read them. And did you explain those two in this room? I did. No, 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 that up there. And again, Judge, that has the uh, scrolling transcripts. You want to give okay. that instruction? All right, once again, folks, uh, on the screen uh, this time, you won't have it in, you won't have it in the bar copy, but on the screen, what we have rolled out the transcript. Again, that transcript is not evidence in this case. It is something that some administrative assistant or someone, I don't know who, has prepared it based upon what they think is being said. If there's anything on that transcript that you think is not what's being said, you to ignore the transcript and go with what you're hearing, okay? It's something there to help you follow along. All right, Judge, your phone. Thank you. 
Pleasant no line. Pleasant? Yeah, P yeah. Pleasant no. Yeah, K N O L L. Line. Where's that at? Um right there. Across the street from the Maritime, the Stockville store. What's the phone number for the first store? Eight six five. Eight six five. Four five. Four zero 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 five. What high school did you guys do? Austin East. You graduate? Yes. When did you graduate? 2013. You go to college? I started at college, no, but I had a dreams. So, Christian, you know how to read it, right? You know how to read it, right? Okay. Okay. And the reason I ask you that is because some stuff's going on in that. And I don't know what's going on. Okay. I've been talking to a lot of people, looking at a lot of things. So I'm trying to figure a bunch of things together and I don't know what's going on. So, because I don't know what you're going to tell me and what part you play in one, I'm going to read you your rights. Okay? At this point, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to read each one of them to you. After I read it to you, I'm going to ask you to put your initial beside each one. It doesn't mean that you give up and it tells me that you understood what I read to you. Like number one, you have the right to remain sign. Do you understand that, sir? Can you put your initials beside me? Oh, yeah. And you said it can't be used against you in court. <coughs> Number three, you have the right to consult with the Lord and have the Lord present with you while you question it. Number four, if you want a lawyer, but you will pay for one, the Lord will be appointed to represent you free at any cost to you. And number five, if you decide to answer questions now without the Lord present, you will still have the right to stop answering at any time. You also have the right to stop answering any time until you talk to the Lord. Can you understand that? Okay. And then he says, I understand these right. I'm going to make a statement and ask questions without the Lord present. No promise or threats with me. If you want to talk to me about what's going on, please sign right there. Okay. 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 is December 18th. And I have a time. He gave me this time to go right. We realize this. Okay. Right. Oh, I understand. I understand. December 18th. And the time is 5.26 a.m. What's the date? I mean, you say it's December 18th. And it's 5.26, I think I said. It's 5.26 in the morning? Yeah, 5.26 in the morning. This one is for school. I'm 
start from the beginning now. When, when we was coming in, I wasn't even paying attention. I'm looking at my phone. All I know is I look up. Sometimes I look, I, I just see a gun. Sometimes I see a guy I just put my head down and start shooting. Sometimes they start shooting. When they start shooting, I'm down like this. All the time I heard, bum, 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 bum. They stop. I'm, that, I'm trying to I look, make sure everything's okay. I look over, he like, he, he laying back like this. He laying back like this, now I see his blood just squirting out and then the car rolling to the bed, so I try to grab it and try to put it in part, but I don't know if it's put on the gas or I don't know, I don't know, because I don't know when you try, I don't know what somebody thinks you, so feel me, he's feeling the gas. Or oh, whatever. I tried to park it. Bro, I'm fucking park, park it. You want to stop? I want to stop me. He was in my just built like this. I couldn't get it out of my side, so I crawled through the back to get out. Mm-hmm. I come to his window. His window shot out. I mean, his window, I just see a blood just squirting out. I take out my hoodie, you know, put it on this nigga, try to hold a pressure on me. I'm telling people, call the police, call the police, call the police. Call the police. Who's on the call? It was me, him, and my other cousin, the one the child brought in with Bill. The, the long hair with the glasses. What's his name? Kevin Potter. Okay. Who else? Let's see. Just you, Kevin? I'm the one that was driving. And Brian? Yes. No one else is in the car? No. <laughs> So, when you were leaving Green Hill, what time was that? I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay, where were we all headed? We went to school, and we went to we we my house. I had this one to go by. I mean, I mean, I'm going to play. I'm going to go out of my house. So, I'm saying, so I can come back. We come back and pay attention to something on my phone. Why were we coming back? Hmm. If you were going to your house, why were we coming back? We just coming back. My mom was there, my mom was in my granny house. I ain't going to lie, earlier, earlier tonight, mm-hmm. his mom got shot. Right. My good, the one who got shot. Right. So, really, I'm, I'm my head gone. You feel me? Because it's my auntie. We had the same birthday and everything. So my head gone, so he you feel me, my cousin we we gonna be to get him try to get his mind out for it. So we pull in, you feel me, I'm looking at my phone, as soon as I look up, I just see a gun and I just look. I just put my head in. You know? Now but what is it when you said you just saw a gun, was it a guy standing outside the car? No, it was another car that I I wanted I couldn't look fast enough to see what the car was. Mm-hmm. So I, just, I don't know, I see a gun pointing my way. Get down. You know what I mean? So I get when somebody gets in there and start shooting, they start shooting. I kinda I ain't have enough time to tell nobody to get in on the dub, nothing. I just dub. And they start shooting. I heard other gunshots and my car just still rolling. It's just still rolling. I look over, I see stuff. She bleeding and he ran mm-hmm. into the wall. I'm trying to bark. But I couldn't bark because I'm not on that side. Mm-hmm. We ran into the wall. I had to climb to the bed. Come, <laughs> get another car, uh, muddy. So I took out my hoodie, try to put it on the nigga old bridge. Still calling the police, telling everybody still to call the police. So you don't want to the color of cars? I, 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 all I seen was a gun. I was a gun. That's all I seen. Do you know if it was, the gun was in the driver's hand, the passenger's hand? I think it was in the driver's hand. Okay. Cause it was so close, like as soon as I look, I see a gun. Just... So tell me about what you know about his, his your Indian shop. I don't know. When I pulled up, they told me I couldn't. I couldn't go in the house. Nothing. My mom was over there, and my mom didn't want to tell me I was at home. And my mom was like, I'm about to go check on your granny. I think she's see. And then he called me, he said, bro, I think my mama just got shot, bro. He called me, said, okay, I'm on my way. 
So now you get embarrassed. I'm at the left, and you know, this street coming off the top of I just see a lot of police slides, ambulance slides, everything. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm asking, what happened? Where she get shot at? Whatever. No, I ain't trying to tell me nothing. I'm mad at this. I don't know. You know, I tell me nothing. And he's like, she got shot like that. And he came out her butt or something like that. I don't know. I ain't talked to her since or nothing. He said, I'm going to go to the hospital. Because I don't want to see my mama like kids. That's the reason why he. This was why we went over there. Where were the green hills? Yeah. Okay. Who's the partner you got to? TA. TJ, yeah? TA. Right. Who is that to you? She's a friend I knew since my first year in high school. So not blood related? Not blood related. Okay. So what time did you get over there? I'm not. Well, I'm pregnant. 
what bring me, what bring me, no, I tell you what bring me. So, one was like, you just need to get away from here right now. Cause I ain't work. Cause my mom didn't tell me, when my mom left my house, she didn't tell me what was going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? She just said, your granny chirping, I'm gonna go see what's wrong with her. She didn't tell me what's going on. Brandy called me. He said, brother, I just heard my brother got shot. I said, where are they? He said, I'm on my way to her house right now. I said, I'm on my way. That's all. That's all. And, and I believe that. Don't be wrong. I, I, I believe all that. Not a problem at all about that. Brandon's upset. Brandon's upset as hell. Rightfully so. Mm-hmm. Somebody just shot up his house, hit his mom, almost killed his 10 year old little sister. Yes. Plain and simple. No, I don't know how I'm going to tell you right now. Well, yeah. That 10 year old little girl is very lucky to be alive. Where the bullets came through, because whoever shot up that house was not playing. Mm-hmm. So Brandon knows. What's going on? Here, here's, and Brandon's mad. Brandon got you involved in something this evening. I already know about it. Got me involved in what? Mm-hmm. Listen to me. Okay? The video doesn't lie, because you three hills is covered in the video. Mm-hmm. Bad video cameras everywhere. Okay. I already know you were at that house. At what house? The apartment. The apartment you were in. Yeah. So I know some, several other people that were in there. Yeah. Okay. Text messages were already sent. About what? About coming over to the apartment and bringing guns. Mm-hmm. Okay. Listen, no, I'm not good. Listen, yeah, listen, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. Brandon was upset. Brandon wanted to go do bad things because that's the way Brandon handles things. I know you didn't want to go, but you're not going to let Brandon go by himself. I did just listen to me. Listen to me here. Listen to you. Okay? Before you dig yourself a hole, trying to let you get out of that hole. Because Brandon put you in a hole. Because tonight, Brandon killed somebody. When he, listen to me, when he went over to Lonsdale, he didn't realize he did. But he was mad and he was trying to get back at some, someone. Listen to me, you yeah, know what I'm talking about. Now, listen, okay? listen. So before I know you were there, oh, uh, no, 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 no. Here's, here's what I'm wrong. You're going to mess up. The video from Green Hill showed me that you're leaving, the two cars are leaving. What place is the car? Uh, it, Christopher, I'm not playing here. Okay. Okay? Hey. Okay. It shows him coming back. Christopher, Brandon did something out there. You didn't want him to do it. You thought he wasn't going to do it. He, you just thought he was going to blow off some steam. He didn't mean to. I don't think he really meant to. I thought he, I think he meant to scare some kids. And for a short point, it was an accident. Well, he didn't. He meant to shoot, but he didn't mean to hurt anybody. And this one, this one, this what I was saying. So I'm on Facebook, and there's somebody saying that. A young man got shot. <coughs> Christian. Yeah. That's my, my baby mama. That's our cousin. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what I'm saying. He didn't know who. He was just mad. He wanted to go over to the west side. And for a friend has his own car. So. Okay. No, 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 no. Listen to me. Here's where you're going to mess up. Tell him what happened. Be honest with me. Tell me what Brandon did. And listen, because if not, you're going you're going to dig yourself a hole. Okay. Okay. Because I won't be able to help you if you turn around and say, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. We weren't there. When I already know better. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, so okay. tell me what Brandon did out there in Lonsdale. Honestly. Yeah. I don't know what Brandon did. Okay. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Nah, you, you want me to be honest with you. I'm not talking to 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 you. I'm
come to you, you don't believe me. Because I already know better. Okay. I already got the witnesses out there. Right, go to your I already did. Right. What, what do you think I've been doing for the past, you know, days? Mm -hmm. No, no, you don't get, it doesn't work that way. Okay. It doesn't work that way. I'm going to tell you, you're going to mess up. If you want to take, take what happened out there and put it on your shoulders, we can do that. Or you can tell me the truth about what Brandon did. Lonsdale? Yes. You were there. You were there. Don't lie to me. Don't say you weren't. Because we already know. That I was in Lonsdale. Yes. For a fact. Yes. Yeah, I got to prove it. Okay. Me. And you know where I'm going to prove it? Is when after I charge you with first degree murder. Do you want me to do that? Because okay. that's where we're going. Okay. And I don't want to do that to you because that's not what you deserve. Okay? Brandon did something out there. I know Brandon did it. But if you sit here and tell me, oh, I wasn't even there, I can prove you were. And if you want to play this game right now, I would suggest you don't because you're going to go on losing that. So tell me what Brandon did. Please. Brandon was mad. But it was mad. You see, he had to go handle some business. You can go handle some business, bro. Look, I know what time she is. I got twins. I don't care. I don't care what you do. That's my auntie. I love my auntie to death. Me and my auntie got the same birthday. Mm -hmm. But I can't jeopardize my kids. I can't jeopardize my kids. It's their first Christmas. I can't jeopardize that. I'm not doing it. I'm not jeopardizing my life just because you're mad. That's what you're for. Y'all want to go handle kind of this. You feel me? I don't know. I got nothing to do with none of that. Um, what brother did, I don't got nothing to do with it. I know that. But just because you were there, and you didn't do anything, but you saw what happened. No, uh, I didn't see what happened. I didn't see what happened. Tell me what happened on Long I don't. Because you were there. I already can prove it. You got to show me. Okay. You trying to charge me with first degree murder. It, it, I it, didn't do it. Right now, I can prove you were out there. Something I didn't do, though. Brandon did it, but you saw it. I didn't and see yes, it. Did. Listen, 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 listen okay, to me. I promise to God on my kids, on my granddaddy, on my dead granddaddy. Please look at me in my eyes. On my kids, on my dead granddaddy, on my granny, on my cousin that just got shot mm -hmm. in his neck. I can't see what this man did. I don't got nothing to do with him. I got kids. I can't put my life in jeopardy. But you were out there long ago. No. Yes, you were. And that's the problem I have. Listen to me before you mess up. Because here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take your cell phone. I'm going to get the GPS off of it. You might not have GPS turned on, but the great thing about Apple, they track everywhere that anyone goes. I'm going to get that. I'm going to prove that you're out there. I'm going to do G, uh, GSR on your hands and see if you shot. Okay. Okay? And then when that comes back positive, the, the GPS shows me that you were out there. The witnesses already picked you out from out there. Who's the witness? Well, guess what? You don't need me yet. Because they did. I'm just going to tell you. The video from Green Hills shows me, shows me that you're getting those two cars. What cars? The two cars that drove over to Lonsdale. What two cars? So from there, I can prove that you came back in one of those cars. That gives me enough to charge you. You understand? A young man lost his life because Brandon did something. And, this is and, you're, and you're going to take the ride with Brandon no. or for Brandon. Not because guess what? Him. Then tell me what happened. Only you can help yourself right now. If you want to help, no. If you don't want to help yourself, don't. And I, I told you what I'm going to do. And if you want to take that ride, we'll take the ride. Or you can sit here and tell me what Brandon did. Okay, but this one, this one I'm saying. I'm going to jail, man. Not right now, no. If you tell me the truth. Brady got out and he had a piece of ice. He did what he wanted to do. Okay. Tell me what happened. No, 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 no. Here's what, buddy. 
here, here, here's, here's the problem. You won't convince me, you won't convince anyone on this great earth that you let Brandon get out by himself and af after his mom got shot and not be no and not be take the or protect his back. You didn't shoot, but you're not gonna let Brandon walk around out there by himself. And you know that as well as I do. You know that. You're not gonna let him go out by himself. Just because you followed him, thinking that he didn't work on do nothing. He's and you know how far he was when he shot. Him. He was just trying to scare some people. Make a form. That's all. And then young man lost his life. Exactly. Exactly. And I don't want to be a part of him. And I understand that. Oh, but it's, it's too late, buddy. Yeah, I know, but there's nothing we can do to change that. But you can tell me what Brandon did. He got a third in shot. Okay. Well, where, did, where, did, where did he park? Because he was driving your car. So where, where, where did he park? Because it was all his idea. He's driving. He drives his, your car out there. Am I going to break the home tonight? I'm hoping so. I am hoping so. Honestly with me. I'm telling you, I'm hoping so. If, you if you're honest. But if you're not sitting here being honest with me, I'm going to have to say no. Because you've not been honest with me. He parked my car. Where, where'd you park? He parked by basketball court. Where? Basketball court. Okay. He walked over there. He did what he had to do. Right no, no, no. Listen to me. But this is the part where if you want I want to go home so and then, then you have to be a little bit more than just, you know, did this and, you know, that's it. We, I know that now. You get out of the car with him. Where do you go from there? Where you walk. Do you know where, you know where I'm going? No. I'm not from my house. I don't go out right there. I don't beef with people. I don't do nothing. I don't, I got, I don't know. I don't Absolutely. know what you but I got kids. Yeah, no. I got family. I got family. And I want you to be there for them. I want you yeah, to be I here. Like you, I feel like you're trying to give me a run mm -hmm. so you can lock me up. No, I'm trying to, help. right now, I'm trying to help you. I know it's hard for you to believe. So you're just following Brandon. Mm -hmm. And Brandon's walking around. What kind of gun does Brandon have? He had, um, was a revolver. Okay. So, Where'd you go? You don't know mom's there. I don't know mom. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. If you feel like he's seen who shot his mom or right. he or know. He knows. He know. He has to know who shot his mom. I, I'm 100% with you there. He got to know he shot his mom. He knows what's going on. But I can't, I mean, it ain't really too much I can tell you because I don't know nothing. Okay. So. You were walking and how long was he out there for? Well, not that long. Okay. What happens? He shoot. Okay, well, why is he shoot? I guess because he felt like Bill might be. Okay. Where was he when he started shooting? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What is he? I don't know. Was he in a yard? Was he in a courtyard? Was he, you know, in a parking lot? Okay. 
but it doesn't make you guilty of doing this. Um, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he's standing. Where is he standing? Just, just, just be honest. Honestly, man, I can't remember nothing. But you gotta understand, my auntie got shot tonight. Mm -hmm. My cousin got shot tonight. Absolutely. Like everything I'm just running through my mind so crazy, bro. I did it again. I might go to jail. I let, let, let's, let's skip that part because we're trying to work through this to make sure we know exactly what happened. Okay? So where was Brandon? He was in the street or the yard. I don't know. Okay. And, like I said, does he say who he's looking for? No. Okay. He didn't. He didn't tell me this because I'm, I'm, I'm not going on nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going on nothing. And like I said, you're just fine. You're not going on But you, you, you're there. So, does he say anything to these, to these people? Not that I don't know. Okay. Not that I don't know. So, he just starts shooting. He just starts shooting. Okay. It's not I guess. You were there. So does, does he just start shooting? Okay. Does he say anything you want to shoot? I don't know. He, he starts shooting. He, he, he don't start cussing, saying, don't shoot my mom, or this is what you get for shooting my mom, or anything like that. Okay. I'm not really, I'm not used to nothing like this. Okay. I'm not used to it. So, I mean, did you see the people that you were shooting at? No. Okay. Because I'm standing. Behind him. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm only in front of him and he actually is shooting me or something. Well, I don't know what's going on. Were these people in the yard? Were they in a parking lot in a car? It was in the yard. In the yard? Okay. Anything special about these people? I, listen, tell you like this. Only time I go out to Lonsdale is with my baby mom because her mom would be out there. Okay. I wouldn't never, I wouldn't go out there shooting like that because. What if I was to go up there and shoot something and get her mom or her little sister or her little brother? Okay. I, I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Then I gotta feel bad. Then I gotta come home to you and look at you and know that I did some shit like that. Okay. So, how many times do you think he shot? About five, four, five. Okay. What happens after that? I'm, when he starts shooting, I start running. Okay. I you know what I'm telling you, don't try to use this against me, though. No, no. If so, I want to go home tonight. Like, where do you run to? I'm running. Get in the car. Okay, so you run back to the court. Yeah. Jump in the car. And then where do y'all go? Back to your hills. Okay. Who knows he's out there at Green Hills? Nobody. He does. It's a thing. I'm going to tell you right here. First off, Brandon don't go to Green Hills. Okay. Brandon don't never come to Green Hills. Came to Green Hills with me. Came to Green Hills with me. Okay. Do you hang out at Green Hills? I do be there sometimes. Okay. The girl at the TA, the girl that lives right there, that's like a sister to me. I know it's his freshman year. Okay. Maybe they got asked what she gave it. So would these guys know that you hang out there? No. These guys don't even know that I would be me. He brand new so, so, somehow he knew he was at Green Hills because it's you know, saying, no, it don't have to it didn't have to necessarily be these guys though. I I it's hard for me to believe that his mom's house gets shot up. Uh -huh. I, 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 it's not what I'm saying. Okay. It could be somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that oh uh, or this or it be and I'm gonna be out here waiting on them. Right. You see what I'm saying? I, 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 and I'm, but, but you know what I'm saying. His mom's house can't get shot up. Yeah. And then him go out there and shoot Wazel. Mm -hmm. And then him get shot on the same night by coincidence. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. Someone had to know. What was that? Someone was looking for him. Someone was going to up. And if he's in your car, not his car, someone has to know, number one, of your cousins, that you hang out together. Because they're looking. They're, they're, they're looking, you know, pretty damn hard. And they find you, you know, faster than the police can find you. And you know what I'm saying? So how, what I'm saying is who is this in this car? 
who's shooting, who shoots Brandon, you know? Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not sure Brandon's going to make it. That, that's how bad it is. You saw how bad he was bleeding. You saw how bad it was. I'm not sure he's going to make it. So who shoots Brandon? <laughs> So, 
Why was she sitting there? Are they on the rocks or something? I know she looked a little, you know, crazy from what I'm saying. And he had told you some of a couple things that she might be crazy. So why was she setting up? Especially she she was mama's house. That's what I'm saying. And I promise you, a long time ago, I took my cousin to the hospital. She about to get induced on Monday. He said, bro, I can't trust girl, bro. I just feel like she's going to do something crazy. And that's why, I, that's, that's why I think. Okay. Because who would she get to set back to go shoot the house up? I don't know. I don't talk to her like that. Okay. I do not talk to her like she that. Got a, she got a big family or anything? Crazy family? I don't talk to her like that. I didn't know if, if Brandon told you. No, I just, I communicate with Brandon. That's it, I don't talk to his girlfriend. You see, because if you talk to his girlfriend, he might be mad at me. Right. It's like, I won't want him just sitting there talking to my baby mama. Right. You know what I'm saying? So from there, we don't know who she would have talked to. Because she didn't do it. We know she didn't, you know, she got that. I don't know who she talked to. She should have been the one who again questioned. Okay. So we don't know why that would happen unless she just she's mad at him. She thinks she, he's cheating or something. I guess. I, I, I'm, I'm asking you because I don't know. I would. I, I, it, that's my cousin. That's my blood cousin, but I don't know the dirty move. Mm-hmm. I don't know what he's doing in his life. He, want, he don't know my urban move. I'm just trying. So after that, he goes over to Greenhouse. Where did she get that gun from? He, like, I don't know his urban room. Okay. So he has that gun. Jumps in the car. But you don't feel like it. But no, no, because you're, you're, you're not telling me everything. Because all these people are going to tell me the same thing. That Brandon was mad. Brandon went out there and shot but you're going, to, you're, if you're, if you're not going to help yourself, if you're not going to tell me the truth, I can't help you. Now, I want to help you. I know it's more than just you and him. Just be honest. Hmm? I'm going to jail tonight. No, I didn't say that. But I'm saying, I'm asking you one straight up one, like, as a man. As a, right now, you have no warrants on file for you. I'm just trying to make my life right. That's all I'm saying. I understand that. I got twins. I just had twins. They just five. And I want you to be there for the first Christmas. I want you to be there for the next Christmas. I want you to be there as a father and a daddy to these kids for the rest of your life. And that's what I'm trying to do. And then you need to give me with a sense of murder or murder or whatever it is. I would never see my kids again. I'm trying to figure out what happened. Because the young man lost his life over something. That, that kid had nothing to do with That kid had nothing to do with going over there and shooting up his, his mama's house. Okay? So that's why I'm trying to figure out. And, and, and to me, though, I just feel like maybe the dude that got shot they didn't do it. It could have been somebody else. Bro, I just feel like bro was on some hot head stuff and went back and, and, and he stopped shooting. That's exactly what it was. And he... There was nobody, a lot of people out there, was there? And that's pretty much the first people he saw. And he was just trying to make a point. He was mad. And because he was mad, some kid lost his life. And that's crazy, it's crazy, but this my baby mom could. It's crazy. So telling me it's true life like what's up. I don't know what people think. Street life's not what's up. You know what's not? It's not. It's really not. Mm-hmm. I just lost my cousin proudly. My eyes he just got shot. It's not what's up. It's not what's up. So whatever I'm gonna tell you again, what is gonna be brought up in court. I'm gonna talk to everybody. And when they tell me the same story, we're, we're going to charge Brandon. If Brandon makes it. Because Brandon went out there and shot him. But, but 
But there's nothing, there's nothing you can do about that or stop because I already knew all that. I'm going to do my best. But if you sit here and you got that one, I'm telling you the truth. Okay. Did you have a gun? No. I don't have I don't own a gun. Okay. Just because you don't have a gun doesn't mean you didn't have a gun. Well, I didn't have a gun. Okay. Brandon had a gun. Brandon did have a gun. Because Brandon called me when my mom just got shot. And he won. He said, he said, I think. They said, right, I just heard that when mom got shot. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Hang on. He caught back in like five minutes. Bro, my mom just got shot. I said, where are you with? So I'm on my way to the crib. I said, I'm on my way, bro. When I was falling around the ground. Yeah, in Longdale. When you were falling. It was all walking. And the whole group was walking together? Not everybody. Some mm-hmm. people stayed in the car, some people could drive. Okay, who, who stayed in your car? Yeah. Okay. 
get a stop sign. Mm -hmm. I'm looking, I'm looking at my phone, so I'm saying, look up. When I look up, all I see is a gun. I look up, and I hear, <laughs> but I hear, did you hear anything before that, bro? Right? Nobody had said, oh, my name's already on the line. Nobody had said, no, man, nobody, it was no talking. No, no cussing, no, no cussing, it was no talking. It was nothing, I promise you, it was nothing. I just, 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 how do they know you're out there? That's why who, who knows this what you're doing? Somebody knows somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. That's, that's just how I feel. That's just how I would think. Right. Somebody knows somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. Okay. Somebody knows somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. Okay. Well, I mean, somebody knows somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. They know somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. They know somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. They know somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. They know somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. They know somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. They know somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. They know somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. They know somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. They know somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. They know somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. They know somebody, they know somebody, they know somebody. They know somebody, they know somebody, they know did anyone talk to anybody? Did you go over and talk to anybody? No. Did Brandon talk to anybody? No. I don't know nobody out there really. No, right, but did anyone approach anybody? No. No one approached some other people and said, hey, I'm looking for no. Billy Bob or whatever? No. So he's just randomly going out there. So yeah, as far as you know. Don't go out As far as I know. He, he hot head, his mom just got shot. The first person he see, he showed me. Okay. So he's not saying, hey, I'm going in this house right here, follow me. Yeah, he's yeah. not saying okay. that. Why are they looking to shoot him after that? Because they are, it, 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 what I'm thinking in my head, these people already shot up his mom's house. Yeah. Why are they looking to shoot up him up now? Mm -hmm. Unless it's something connected out to the one sale. That's what I'm saying. But it might make sense to me either. It really don't. So he's not pinpointing anybody out there in the one And after that, you drive back to Green Hills. How long did you stay inside Green Hills for in the apartment? <coughs> Uh, probably stay there for about 20, 30 minutes. Same time. So you drive straight from Monsanto to Green Hills or you stop anywhere else, go anywhere else? Straight in. Okay. So you're, you stay back in, inside. Does he bring that man into that house? I'm not sure. You know, I mean, it's multiple people in here. So. Okay. Does both cars get back there? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. This your car? Okay. The only person I know that shot for a fan, that shot, I don't know who else shot, I don't know who else did what. Brain shot. Mm -hmm. Brain shot, I'm running, I look back, I see people running towards me. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm getting back, but really, I'm this, this type of shit, I'm not used to. I'm so, not used to. He doesn't pinpoint these people, he doesn't say, hey, I'm looking for Billy Bob or whatever. No, he don't say any names, he don't say none of that. So, I just don't understand how they find him in Green Hills. I don't I, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to come to the, like, I'm trying to come to the same conclusion, like, hell. Does he have any? Bert, who doesn't know about Brandon? <laughs> and this is what I was going to tell you. Brandon is so friendly with everybody. I really think this girl said him up. And I can understand that to the point where I really think this girl said because listen, this is what he's been saying. He like, bruh, I mean, I, I give her money, she wanna pay for other stuff, she ain't paying the rent. A landlord come the other day, say I gotta be at December thirty first. She and he was like, Well, Christmas is around the corner, so it can't be January fifteenth. Mm -hmm. She been giving, I mean, he been giving her money to go do this, do this, but she doing other things with him. Uh, go pay these bills, go pay, but she not, she not paying the bills. Not paying the bills. Whatever, she wants. Whatever she want, really. And I, 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 feel, I really like, feel like it's her, bro. But my, my, my question is, I, I understand her maybe having to shoot up the house. That's one thing. But to tell somebody, hey, would you go kill this guy for me? Yeah. 
I understand if she comes to someone and says, hey, go shoot up his mama's house or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, someone might do that. But if she comes to someone and says, hey, go kill this guy for me. And that takes a lot. That takes a lot. Yeah. It, it, it takes a lot. So if some woman comes up to you and says, hey, go kill us here, you'll be like, yeah, okay, and grab it and leave and not come back. So that takes a lot to say, okay, and go do it. I ain't seen nobody get shot. I ain't never shot nobody until today. I just seen that my cousin got shot in his neck. Right, but that takes a lot to do. It's a lot to do. So, is she fucking around? Do you know? Did his brain her say she's cheating? He said, I'm going to tell you one thing. He always told me from like after three months they start missing after that. Bro, I don't trust her. I don't trust her. I don't trust her. Anytime we talk about her girls, I don't trust her girl. Why is he still with her? I feel, I feel like, like, even if you talk to his mom, his mama tell him to leave, I tell him to leave her. Everybody tell him to leave her. But I, just, I guess he in love with her. You can't get what you love at the same time. If you don't trust somebody, you don't need to be around him. You don't need to be with him. For real. I'm with you. I'm with you. For real. You never know, just like what just happened. She could have got his mama hair shot up. She could have just got him shot. Mm. She could have just almost got me shot. Almost got my other cousin shot. Absolutely. For real. Could have killed everybody in the car. Could have killed everybody in the car. I knew who's going to hit the wall right after that. It's, a, it's, it's not a game I heard. No, it's not. It's not a game. That's why I don't do this. This drink stuff, it's not me. That's no. not me. What else is it? Yes. What else do you it's tell me about who may have done this or why this? I can't. I really can't tell you nothing because I want to know. Okay. Honestly, no, no, no. I want to know. Okay. I promise you, I'm gonna let you know everything I know. Right. Give me the name. I'm back. All right. And I don't know where to go. No. We're, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Your Honor, can we approach him? Seize that fruit of people. Probably gonna need jury out for this. Okay. Probably gonna need jury out for this. Okay. All right, folks, since I got short recess, you leave that book. Okay. I do, Your Honor. The written transcript that goes along with this is specifically divergent from the court's order and findings of facts of May 17, 2017. In particular, the court in relative to a ruling concerning a motion to suppress actually uh, cited as a basis part of the statement that was there. We filed a motion clarifying that and the court specifically entered an amended findings of facts and conclusions of law dated May 17, 2017 that the statement was quote, and I'm, I'm reading not from my motion but from the court's order open quote, I ain't seen nobody get shot, period I ain't shot nobody, period till today, period I just seen that my cousin got shot in his neck close quote. Now that's left out and when you leave that period out, it changes all sorts of meaning. And I get, we're going to talk to them all day long about what's heard, but they put that up there and they knew that. They left that punctuation out. And it markedly changes things. They just read the, basically a, whatever you want to say, a crafted statement that says, uh, the, I uh, ain't shot nobody till today. 
When you leave that period out there, you leave that pause out there, you just put that in there, that changes the meaning. I mean, punctuation matters. And that, that, that's not something that, that's in a court order. So what you're saying is, is that the punctuation, there's the no punctuation there. There should be punctuation there. Well, that's the court's order. I went back yeah, and I went back and I, and I looked. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm upset. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. So just to be clear, what I was typing out, again, is what I'm listening to. So to say that my punctuation is a statement of law uh, is, is not accurate. Or even to say it's a statement of fact. Because I can't, I can't comment on the facts of this case to the jury at all. I've already instructed them that the transcript is not the evidence. And so I don't really see what you're arguing is, is that there should be a period where they didn't put a period. Is that what you're saying? It's a perversion. It's just all ran together. And if you if you don't even put a space there, you don't put anything there, it looks like he makes a statement, I ain't shot nobody till today. It makes it look like he's admitting that. And it's clearly in that context not what it is. And they just saw it. They just saw it roll up there. Well, what I think they're hearing it. I've already instructed them. I mean, if you want to go back with Investigator Leffer and ask him about that, you can't. We just argue it. You can just argue it uh, to the jury at the end. I, I don't think what you're arguing is, is I don't really see it, I guess is what I'm saying. I don't understand. Well, I guess it was, you know, in response to the original suppression, and I'm, I'm talking about your original order, you know, I said, that's not what he said. The court clarified it, and then the court says, note the proper punctuation, difficult to determine, and that statement is oral or written. But you put the punctuation in, you quote it, and then they just smush it all together. I mean, it... Uh, well, I, did, I didn't intend to tell the state exactly how the transcript had to be written. I think I was just explaining, here, here's what I was hearing. So, and that's the thing, this is not a written statement, it's an oral statement. I, I, I agree, and when you type it like that, you take it totally out of context with regards to that. I mean, that was the point. I know the court went back and listened to it multiple times relative to it. I mean, the court wouldn't have made the ruling or the court would not have amended its order and put that additional stuff in without taking great pains to listen to it. They left the punctuation out and it changes the meaning. Well, I, I guess I'm just with you on that. I mean, I'll be glad to instruct the jury once again if you want me to that the transcript is not evidence. I, I think you I think you have to after what just just went up there. I mean well I'll do that. Alright, let's bring it back. I'm sorry, what what are we what are we telling the jury that I'm just, oh, I'm sorry. Hey officer can you take the jury out for just a second, please? Thank you. I'm just going to tell the jury the same thing I've told them three times already, is yes. that the transcript is not evidence, and then to go by what they're hearing if there's any difference. All right, now I'm bringing the jury. <coughs> Never thought I'd say I missed this, but... Yes, Your Honor. All right, welcome back, folks. Just want to make one more reiteration. The transcript is not evidence. That is just somebody typing up what they think there is being said. You're to go by what you're hearing, not by what you're reading. The, the words are just there to kind of help you follow along. All right, General, uh, you understand your shoulder? Yes, sir. All right, we have lights back off. You may resume your record. Thank you. All right, give me one minute. I'm I'm going to be Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who's out there with Brandon? Brandon Okay. Who else is out there with you? Brandon the We all are coming. We close, but I'm kind of. Okay. You can. Okay. You know how many people in that group over there? Uh, Staying in that yard that you, you said. Three. Did you tell other guys or girls? Um, no. 
you know they're black or white. Do you know I am? Since I know, I don't know him, but my mother's my cousin one of them. Okay. But you didn't know that at the time? I don't know him still. Okay. But you didn't know it was your baby mom's cousin at the time? You just learned that afterwards? So I have question. You said Brandon had a revolver. 357. Not sure where he got that. He got that gun from. Alright. Someone else is shooting out there. Who else is shooting? Ain't seen. And other man, but I ain't that. You know anything about guns? Not really. Okay. Have you ever shot a gun before? that they can boost kids. Because you are at a gun team. There's no way you can't tell me that you don't want it. I found 40 some cases out there. Mm -hmm. A revolver holds six. Mm -hmm. And then you got to reload and pull all those cases out for they draw. He didn't do that six times. Mm -hmm. Who else is shooting out there? Mm -hmm. if, you shoot, if you shot up in the air, you shot up in the air. Or did you point it at That's where we're at now. Did you shoot it at them or did you point up there? Because the house is hit high. The apartment's hit high. One spray shot. I started. Okay. okay. This is where we're, we're having issues. Because I need to know the whole truth. I'm no, you're not. No, you're not. No, because man, I'm telling you what I told you. Like, you're not telling the whole truth out there. I found 40 plus cases out there. That's a shitload of the cases. This is so insane. Why do you feel like you gotta be me? Because you're telling me no one else. You're saying there's no one else shot. No, I didn't say that. I said once okay. already shot. I read. Who else shot? I don't know. Okay. Now, see, it's it's not me or I don't know, and that doesn't work. Well, that doesn't work because I do know you know. Listen, like I told you before, I don't be around things like this. Once they, once they, right? I, I, and I don't doubt that. And then, listen, I'm just, listen, listen, just listen to me. Once spring shot, I start running, man. I start running. Okay. So I'm looking at you in your eyes like a man. Okay. Once spring shot, I start running. Alright. I'm going to do GSR on you right now. What's that? That's where they find out if you shot him. Gun residue is what it is. Alright, so I, I got one question. Listen, <laughs> can you go home? I can ride. I can. I, you can give me a week. You know where to find me. You know where I live. You give me a week. I'll find out who shot me. No, 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 no. I'm going to do the gun. Shot residue on your hands. That's going to tell me if you shot a gun today or last night. And if you're sitting here lying to me, I told you. I can't help you then. But if you're telling me that you're shooting up in the air, away from these guys, I can understand you. But you're not telling me the truth. What kind of gun did you have? Whose gun was it? Whose gun was it? Whose gun was it? Did you have? Did you shoot at those kids to be me? To be me. To be me. Or did you shoot up in the air? I shot in the air. What kind of gun did you have? Or do you know what model it was? What, what kind? Glock? Smith and Wesson? Whose gun was it? I'm not sure. Who got it? I'm not sure. I really don't know. I don't know too much about it. I don't know too much about it. Nothing like this. I'm not. 
I mean, in the ground, but when he, he got back to the car. I don't know if he had a gun on him when he got shot. Okay, so you still don't know where his gun is? I don't know where my, I don't know where that gun I had. And you don't know where that gun is? It was not your gun. No. But you knew it was a 40 caliber block. Did you look at it? Okay. Did he explain to you what a 40 caliber block? I don't know. I don't you know. No, 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 I don't know. I don't know. So, you shot, you mean, Essen, three, four times? Maybe five. Maybe five. Shoot high. I'm shooting high. Oh, okay. I didn't aim at nobody because lazy. I've never shot nobody. I'm scared. I was really scared to go out and shoot. Okay. I was really scared to go out and shoot. Is there anything in the trunk of your car? I'm asking, I don't know. Not that I know of. Okay. I mean, you said you searched it, you searched it. I don't think there's nothing in there. Okay. I just want to. You don't, you don't know if I ain't put any guns in the trunk of your car. I don't think Brandon did. Okay. I just, you told me last time we came here, you won't let me know if I can go home. Mm -hmm. Well, I found out something. Brandon didn't make it. which is a, the interview with the oh, okay. Now let's go to Leffler. Um, after interviewing Mr. Bassett, did you also have occasion to make contact with Mr. Williams? Oh, later on, yes, sir. And were you able to, to get his basic biographical type information, that age, date of birth? Yes. That type of thing. Yes. Uh, did you also get from him any military background? Uh, during the interview, I, I was informed that he had, I believe, two and a half years in the Navy. And had you seen uh, the hats that were in that car at that point in time? Had you in, in the BMW, there was a recruit hat that looked like it had been signed. I can't think of everything that was you know, written on that. And then, of course, in the back window of, of that BMW, there was a Navy hat. Now, also after that, were you, <coughs> excuse me, were you able to go to Green Hills and finally access the uh, video recording equipment? Yes, sir. And did you review that for the pertinent times? I know it's real long. Some of these are real long, but for the pertinent times, <coughs> Uh, surrounding shortly after the Ponce shooting and some of these other times. Yes, sir. In fact, I can play a couple of clips from your review of that. Yes, sir. The Green Hills videos. They are. They're about, I think, seven clips, Judge, and I copied them to a disc. Yeah. But I'm ready yet. And I'll, I'll pause it. To, what is the time that we're looking at here for this day of effort? It is 8.10 p.m. on the 17th of December, 2015. And in terms of what all is happening, what has happened before this time? This is uh, the, the Dallas shooting of Lisa Perry has already occurred at this time.
and what it, uh, is of significance to you at this point in time? Uh, the, the vehicle arrived and two people get out of it and it appears to be a uh, big black man that and um, oh, or I see four people I apologize and if by way of further context, have you already gotten the uh, uh, text message off of Larry Norris' phone at this point in time? Yes, during the investigation, th this is a couple days after we had already got uh, talked to Larry North and got text messages about the guns and what happened. Yes, sir. Governor, just point of clarity so that we understand at the time he got the video, but not at right. December 17th, yeah, yeah, 2015. Yeah, yeah, but what you're saying, investigator, is, is that you had spoken to Mr. North and had those texts at the time you watched this video, not when the video was made, correct? Yeah. I already had those texts by the time I watched this video. By the time you watched it, yes. Right. Go ahead. And the next portion that, uh, is the same day, is that correct? And what's the time that we're focusing in on here? This will be 9 or 7 p.m. And what uh, what is it that we're about to see, as best you recall? Uh, if I can work this later. Oh, right right here is the doorway, uh, and, and you'll see people exit and enter the, the BMW car. Can you tell how they're dressed? Uh, in, in dark clothing, most of them. Yes, sir. And if I may add, it, it, it's probably harder to see on here, but if you have a clear screen, it does appear that they have hoods on with the hoods up. And, and this will be clear when viewed on a TV screen. Oh, absolutely, absolutely is. What car was that that just left? Uh, that that would be a black BMW. Uh, the car next to it is, and again, it is much more clearer on, on the TV screen. Right here is a uh, silver door gold Cadillac.
So the individuals that came out, how many cars did they get into? And, and three cars left the yes. group. Moving forward to 105. This is 105 AM on the 18th of December, 2015. Were you, between the, the 907, 909 hours and this time, were you able to watch the, the, all the video in between? Yes, sir. Were you able to see these cars coming back into that area anyway? No, they had never returned during that, that time. What car is that pulling in? This is going to be the black BMW. So how many total people get out of that black BMW? Uh, four people all together, all dressed similar, and it appears again, of course, on the TV screen, it's easier that the, they have hoodies on and the hoods are pulled up. And moving forward to 150, is that correct? This is 1.50 a.m. on the 18th of December, 2015. And how many people were you able to tell got into that car? Oh, three people actually got out of the car. Five people actually actually exits 1904 Natchez. Uh, three of them walked to the black BMW. Two of them continued walking to the other side of the parking lot. Three got in the car. Yes, sir. And then at 1:57, about five minutes later. Yes, sir. This is 1:57 a.m. 
again the 18th of December 2015. That, that forced the crash into the building, is that correct? That, that is correct. That, that's where after uh, Brandon Perry gets shot, and that's the BMW he was driving that strikes the park. Were you able to tell how many uh, people got out of that vehicle after it struck the, uh, the building? And after, after it hits the building, there's two people that actually get out of the car. One actually runs straight into 1904 Natchez, the part of that building. Another one goes towards the door and then turns and runs towards the exit entrance of Greenhouse. And is this, uh, we may have seen this already, but is this another camera angle from that location? Yes. At 157? Uh, to, to the right of this uh, camera angle, angle excuse me, is the entrance exit to, to Natchez Drive from Greenhouse. Which car is that there? That's going to be the black BMW driven by uh, Brandon Perry. And what about that car? Were you able to discern what that was? Uh, we've done multiple things, but that's going to be the suspect car that from the Brandon Perry shooting. What about that other car there? Is that that was a car that was parked in the parking lot. That uh, earlier it appeared that those two people that I talked to that crossed the parking lot went to that car earlier. Um, behind that car, though, if you sit, watch the person running, you'll actually see a flash. It looks like he's holding uh, a gun out, and you see a flash. That's about running alongside that car. Yes, yeah, well, alongside the car, basically in, in the uh, sidewalk area, not not in the street, but in the sidewalk area. And lastly, that same activity from that last camera angle, is that correct? Right? That's correct. That's the entrance exit to Greenhouse.
and that uh, shows the entrance to Green Hills. And, yes, sir, it does. And is that where some casings were found later? Yes, uh, up there, um, right on the other side of the fence line, in, in <coughs> Street, there, there's some casings. We can turn the lights up. Said that not pre marked this, but I did prepare a separate disc just for those clips that we okay. saw. Just if I could make that next number exhibit. 650. And if I'm a after the interview with Mr. Bassett, was there in fact a GSR uh, kit brought to the room and, and the swabbing and so forth that's been described? Yes, I didn't, I didn't do the GSR kit. Uh, one of our crime uh, techs came to, came to the um, interview room and performed the GSR. And I'm going to throw it, can you recognize it on the book? Yes, this is the again uh it's a gsr kit done from bassett or christopher bassett by who by, by, by joe cox he was he, he has uh since retired from the police department and no objection yeah. Yeah. Yes, and what this is is a DNA card. Uh, these are prepared at the medical examiner's office during the time of the autopsy. They prepare, perform DNA cards, and I, I went later and uh, confiscated one of their DNA cards from this poor <coughs> From the office? Yes. We're no objection. Five seventy one. And five seventy two. Recognize the number. It's basically the same thing, but for Mr. Zagon Dawson. It's a DNA card, like DNA card from the office. We're moving into five seventy two. Again, these items are they uh, sealed and prepared for potential further examination? Yes, sir. Yeah. Still shot. He's going to identify the spot. That guy's going to put it. I'm going to approach with this. Asking you right now that it's a screen capture from the video that we have seen. Yes, from the video that we've been watching, it is a screenshot from it. And for this capture, can you, um, were you able to identify? Some or all these individuals? Uh, the, the, all but two. Uh, I was able to identify Mr. Kipling Culver. This is going to be Mr. Larry Moore back here. This is going to be Mr. Christopher Bassett. This is going to be uh, Mr. Williams. And this is a Daryl Slaw. You don't care if you can just write those names, maybe at the top and draw an arrow down to which one is which.
Two phones that we've heard about confiscated at Morningside Park. You called. Yes, yes. Did you or your team cause those phones to be sent to the TBI for further analysis? Yes, uh, that, that was on a different squad, and that, that was been uh, Mr. B uh, Investigator Booker uh, actually had control of those and sent them to the TBI. And just for the record, can you identify the uh, individuals uh, that you refer to as Mr. Bassett, Mr. Williams, and Mr. Coleman? Today? Yes. Uh, Tell us what they're wearing. Okay, Mr. Mr. Colbert is in, in the middle of a gray uh, shirt and a, I believe it's black and gray tie. Mr. Bassett is over here with the blue suit and blue and red tie. And Mr. Williams is over here in the purple or lavender shirt with a gray tie. Record reflected, I did find all three things. Okay, right. Passwords. Jones, you can talk about first, sir. Thank you, Ron. <coughs> Good afternoon, Investigator Luffler. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Right. Got a little bit of questions that I want to ask you. If you'll bear with me just a minute. you about your investigation commencing on December 17th, 2015, correct? That's correct. And it would say that you were the violent crimes investigator on call at the time and you had a team of two other investigators that you worked with, correct? I, I, I wasn't on call. I was on duty. Okay. My, well, on call to us means that we were on the call at Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not sure of the parlance. I just want to make sure that we were calling the same. Were the other two investigators on call, or were they just no, working? We, we were working a regular shift that day, and our shifts ran from 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. Okay, so you would have come in, clocked in, and been available for duty to accept whatever calls were available then from 4 p.m. on, is that right? We don't clock in, but yes. Okay, well, I, and I, I wasn't trying to diminish your responsibility, I mean, but that would have been, you would have been then available for duty. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. Okay. And relative to the um, first incident, and by that, I'm talking about the Western Heights incident. Yes, sir. Okay. The names associated with that, and we've already heard the 911 call from Alicia Harris. Do you remember that name? Yes, sir. And you actually interviewed Alicia Harris, didn't you? That's correct, sir. All right. And Alicia Harris reported similar information to I you. Think you're saying, huh? Well, let me hear the end of the question. I, I, I'll, I'll back up. She reported similar information to what she reported in the 911 call. Object to reporting. Uh, I'm, she reported similar information to you that you utilized in your investigation as what she reported in the 911 call, right? That is correct. And she gave you some names. Yes, sir, she, she did. And those names are names that have come up in this investigation um, and actually in the examination by Mr. Morton, one of which was Jasmine, what, what's her last name? Mason? Mason. Jasmine yes. Mason. And who did you learn Jasmine Mason belonged to? Or how, how did she factor in this? Who's, whose girlfriend was she? We learned, uh, starting with Oliver Perry's, told us that Jasmine Mason was Brandon Perry's girlfriend. 
You use the term in that interview a couple of times relative to Jasmine Mason that she was kind of crazy was one phraseology that you used and the other one was she was kind of nuts. Who told you she was nuts? I can't it, it's fair to say that you wouldn't just have adopted that. You would have received information that you deemed reliable when you said she's crazy, right? I can't say that either if it was reliable information or not. You just kind of went with it? Most likely, yes, sir. Okay. So you're going with that information that you're conveying to Mr. Bassett in this interview. Did the name Paul Cornelius come up? In, in the investigation, yes, sir. It did. Okay. Did you learn Paul Cornelius was in the area at Western Heights at the time this earlier shooting? I'm talking about the shooting that occurred right after you came on duty on or about December 17, 2015 in Western Heights. Yes, but we didn't learn that until later on in the investigation and I did talk to Paul Cornelius. Okay, you didn't learn it, but certainly 911 knew it such that an officer of your department was dispatched out to investigate the Western Heights shooting, correct? That is correct. Okay. Did you yourself visit the Western Heights scene? Uh, during, no, not, not during the 911 calls or during the investigation of the, the 17th or 18th, I did not. Alright, and the first call that you would have been called out on then would have been the Dallas Street call, correct? That was the first one we were informed of, yes. And just so that we keep all of this straight, the Dallas Street was the shooting involving Lisa Perry, correct? That is correct. And Lisa Perry is Brandon Perry's mom. That is correct. And that shooting occurred after the Western Heights shooting in chronological order. And yes, but not the order I learned it in, but yes, that, that would be correct. Okay, so you didn't learn it till later and then you also learn these names including Paul Cornelius, That's correct. Jasmine Mason. Yeah. I, I knew that one on the 17th. You know that knew that one on the 17th. And you also heard the name Andrew Cornelius, correct? Yes, but I learned that later on also. I got you. And you learned Andrew Cornelius is Jasmine Mason's baby's daddy. That's correct. Okay. I mean, I'm not being no. smart, Alec, with no, that. No, that's, that's who it is. Yes, it's the same. Okay. That being said, Jasmine Mason, Andrew Cornelius, Paul Cornelius, and Alicia Harris, you had that information. You proceeded to the Dallas Street address when you received a call to come out, right? That's correct. How does that call come? Does it come via radio? Do they call the uh, crime office? How physically do you become aware as an investigator of a potential violent crime? What happens is we have a radio and I respond to, you know, dispatch calling us on the radio. <coughs> we don't work on, and, and when I say we, the violent crimes uh, unit does not work on the same channel that the east side or west side of patrol works. We are we are technically on channel D when I don't know if east or west is on A and, or east and west is on C. But they they work off patrol works off of A, channel A and channel B. We work on channel D. So whenever something comes out, of course they dispatch patrol right away. Patrol will then request our assistance and then we're notified on channel D at that time. So it could be several minutes after the officer can get to the scene before we are requested. What constitutes a violent felony that you're generally called out on in Knoxville, Knox County, Tennessee, investigator? There, there's a list of things that we're, we're notified on. Uh, they range, of course, from homicide, uh, rape, robbery, uh, uh, assault, where it looks like the person may die. Uh, that includes shootings and stabbings. And then, of course, bank robbers, we're, we're called for. What about shooting some at someone? Does that does that qualify as a violent crime in Knox County? If there's a victim, if there's a reported victim, uh, again, we, we get many shots in the area call, calls, uh, and when officers get there, they can't find a victim, they can't find anybody, uh, can't find a crime scene. 
Okay. And so the, in most cases, no, we don't get notified of those. Okay. But in this case, you then at some point in time learned that there was a victim of a shooting in Western Heights and his name was Paul Cornelius, didn't you? He never reported that, sir. Regardless of whether or not he reported it, it doesn't mean that it didn't happen, does it? Well, I, again, I did interview him. If you could answer my question first and then you can explain yes or no, okay. sir. Regardless of whether or not he's a cooperative prosecutor, if a citizen reports that another citizen shot at a citizen in Knoxville, Knox County, Tennessee, that means a crime occurred, doesn't it? In that case, yes, sir. But that's not what was reported to us, sir. Did you not hear that 911 call? When I spoke to Paul Cornelius. First, yes or no, did you hear the 911 call? Yeah, I'm not interrupting. I've got a right to ask him. And they, right. you know, Miss Fitzgerald was. Stop. Can we approach? No. Ask your question. You get to answer yes or no, then you can explain it. Yes, sir. So ask your question again. Can I express one thing? You can ask about the 911 call. No, I don't want to hear anything about what they're doing. We can talk about it later. I just want you to ask your question. Did you hear the 911 call? Was your question? You can answer it. Then you have to explain your answer. What I was pointing out, it was General Morton's witness, Miss Fitzgerald, is continually objecting. It's not her witness. Objection to need to come from Mr. Morton. No, I might. All right, go ahead. That being said, you heard the 911 call. Yes. That's a report of a violent crime in Knoxville, Knox County, Tennessee, is it not? There was no victim of, of that. Um, and when I mean by victim, it's something that's actually shot. What you were hearing the 911 calls are, hey, there is a shooting out here. We don't know who's been shot at. We're not sure who's been shooting or exactly what's going on at that time. They just wanted to report shots are being fired. So it doesn't count if someone's not actually hit? What do you mean by count? Well, I mean, you know, it doesn't count as a violent shooting unless somebody's hit. They actually have to be struck by the bullet? No, sir. But at this point, we did not have someone saying, hey, these people are shooting at me. We have a shooting in the air. We don't know if it's someone shooting up in the air. We don't know if it's fireworks at the time. We just have a report that there are possibly shots in the air. Now that you are aware of it, and obviously you were at some point in time after that, did you follow up with Patrol Officer Mason relative to that shooting? Uh, as far as what? What happened in Western Heights? He, he was unable to find the scene. He was unable to find the victim. Right, and that's not what I asked you. As we sit here today, other than seeing him in court, you haven't followed up on the Western Heights investigation with Officer Mason, the officer that was actually dispatched to drive around there, have you? Uh, I, again... The 911 report, Officer Mason stated that he couldn't find a victim and there was no scene. Your Honor, I asked him a specific question and I would like a yes or no and he can explain it. I will ask it again. He's not answering my question. My question, Investigator Leffler, was as we sit here today, other than seeing Patrolman Mason here, you've not done anything with him to follow up on that shooting with Paul Cornelius, have you? With the officer? Yes, sir. Then no. Thank you. Now, relative to the dispatch to the 238 Dallas Street scene, you received a call of someone being shot there, correct? That's correct. Proceeded there in a uh, response time manner, and when you got there, discovered Lisa Perry shot in the buttocks. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you entered the residence. That's correct. Have you subsequently had the opportunity now, as you have conducted this investigation, to review all of the videos associated with, all available to you that have been shown here in court, associated with the Dallas Street investigation? It was shown here in court? Yes, sir. Yes. And in those videos, you see a number of young black men that you've seen identified by name as to who they were. That's correct. And they all had on black hoodies, and in fact, some of them had the hoodie up, right? I'm not sure if Brandon Perry had a hoodie on. He had a jacket on. Okay, he had a... And I, and I don't recall his a hoodie being on Mr. Perry. Some of them had the hoodie up, though, didn't they? Yes. Okay. 
The fact that you have a hoodie up signifies nothing, does it? It might signify it's cold outside, but I don't know. I'll take cold outside, but we don't get to draw a conclusion of a young black man wearing a hoodie up as being indicative of any type of activity, do we? Object to being argued. That's an argument question. That being said, you saw at least one black man, if not two, with their hoodies up at the Dallas Street address. Isn't that correct? After you saw these young black men with the hoodies up, you've seen them identified, right? Yes, sir. All right. Now, identified, they were identified as Richard Williams, correct? Do you recall that? For some other reason, I'm drawing a blank if actually Richard Williams was identified as one of those people at that scene. Okay. What about Brandon Perry? Yes. Okay. What about Chris Bassett? Yes. And you've testified that in reviewing those videos, you determined Brandon Perry drove up in Chris Bassett's car, the black BMW? Yes. As you can see, when the BMW pulls up, he exits the driver's side. Right. Did you see where Chris Bassett was? As far as when he comes up? No, sir. What car he came out of? So you don't know how Chris Bassett got there and don't know if it was another car or how he got there. That would be correct. And in fact, in chronological order of time, he comes up sometime after Mr. Perry gets there. Yes, sir. You spoke to Oliver Perry. Yes, sir. All right. You've seen the driver's license that is part and parcel of an exhibit and we saw a photograph of that wallet up here on the screen. Yes, I did. And it indicates at least as far as the Tennessee Department of Safety is concerned, the address for Brandon Perry is... Uh, I, I can't recall right off 238 off. Dallas. I'll let you check. Yes, it's 238 Dallas Street, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37914. And that's the location that you responded to for the shooting where Lisa Perry shot in the Bucks? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you've testified that all of these people entered into the scene or came into the area around Dallas Street that we know at least you, you can't recall Williams but you do recall Mr. Bassett and Mr. Perry yes sir. okay you didn't get an opportunity to speak to them there uh, I did speak to Brandon Perry in inside the house okay but you didn't get an opportunity to speak to Mr. Bassett that's correct I did not. okay and you used the term uh, I, I think that uh, you investigated that for a period of time and then you got another call after 10 p.m. in Lonsdale Homes. Did you, what we call, clear the scene? Or what happened at Dallas Street? Had you left Dallas Street when you got the Lonsdale call? Or what happened? Yes. Uh, what happened is, of course, I was investigating what happened on Dallas Street. From, from there, we spoke to Mr. K. Oliver. Um, and from that there, it, we got some direction of where to go. Um, and from there, we went to different addresses looking for work in possible now you've seen exhibit number 600, that's the crime scene long for Dallas Street, correct? Yes sir. Alright, and you've seen that it's got, if we could see that exhibit please. Let me show you the document that's filed as exhibit number 600. Yes sir. And it's got what appears to be two pages <coughs> appear to be torn out of a notebook or something of that nature. It looks like there's something across the top. Is that where they came from or do you know? Okay. What this is is the officer handed me a piece of paper and that piece of paper was just a small notebook paper with a spiral on top. And what, what this is at this point is I manufactured this, this back sheet. This is a copy of what he handed me, the front and the back. This part up here, I just put the heading on here for 
the district attorney's office one of those. Okay. So you created everything from the handwriting up. That's correct. And you delivered it to the district attorney's office. Yes, and then I just made a photo copy of the original, which it, it is what he handed the front and back. So that's the original of this document for the Dallas Street, right? That's correct. Okay. Why don't we file that as exhibit whatever our next number? So that's the actual original, right? This is the one off for you. Yes. Okay. Can I touch that in mind if we don't have yeah, okay. 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 Well, sure. Any objections? No, sure. It's 617. Thank you, Chair. I want you to see, I, I'm putting it down here, there's nothing on the bottom down there where I'm putting it on, right? Of course. Sir. Okay. And, and the copy of the Okay, I understand. There's no not sure. Now, you had a crime scene log for Dallas Street, and then you get this call from Lonsdale, and I apologize, I lost track for just a minute. Had you gone back to the station? We did some investigation trying to find these witnesses and where they would be. We went back to the station, uh, got some addresses and what have you, and we went out and looked for them. At some point, we did come back to the police department, if I'm not mistaken, before the Lonsdale, uh, Mr. Dawson shoot. And then you got a call out to Lonsdale? That's correct. And I believe you described the scene on direct as chaotic, correct? Oh, absolutely. And did you get there before or after the Knoxville Fire Department had got there? I got there after the first responding officer. And is it fair to say, well, no, that's first responding, just so we're clear, when you say officers, because they could be fire department officers or police officers, what, did, did the police get there first and the fire department, and then you sort of tell me a rough order? And, and that would have been roughly the order is the police department, fire department, and they have something called uh, first responder for KFD, and they they would have been there to see prior to my and all of these vehicles only have two ways of coming in to the area there at 2704 Badgett. They've either got to run down Goins or they got to come in and around down Badgett, correct? Yes. Because 2704 basically is at the edge of what kind of goes into a dead end and there's a dumpster sort of container there, right? Yes, yes sir. Okay. And when you got there, I believe you testified that you were trying to determine exactly where the crime scene was. That, that, that's one of the things, yes sir. Okay, in the crime scene, it's fair to say, it kept expanding, didn't it? A absolutely, once we learned certain things and, and speaking to the witnesses and the victims of, of the shooting there, we learned that where the suspects may have been standing. And so of course that forces our crime scene back. Who did you determine was responsible for the crime scene log at Lonsdale? I, again, I, can, I don't determine those things. I don't tell the officer, hey, make, make me a crime scene log or anything like that. Did you find one? I don't believe I did. Okay, I mean, I, I just... I, I don't believe <coughs> Okay, so you don't have a paper like you <coughs> filed as the original of the crime scene log from Dallas Street for the Lonsdale homicide? That's correct. Okay. And why are crime scene logs important? Well, there, were, there was a time prior to 911 and the CAD system and prior to the video that it would help us determine which officers were there. If there was an issue, we'd ask the officers, hey, write me a statement or something like that. But with the, with the 911 and the video, we, we, we know which officers are, are arriving on scene. Um, it does help with a point of entry and exit from the crime scene. Um, I, again, uh, in a crime of this gravity, there should have been a crime scene log, shouldn't there? In the perfect world, yes. And it's actually either a standard operating procedure or a general order of the Knoxville Police Department, as we've heard from these other patrol officers, that you're supposed to have one. I, I, again, the, those general orders and SOPs are extremely thick books, and I, I would agree that somewhere in there there is something about a crime scene law. I can't tell you exactly what it is. I, is that a yes? Yes. Okay. I mean, I just I, I get the diminishment. Yes. Okay. So 
relative to this crime scene, you get there, it's hectic, it's chaotic, and as an investigator, you start looking for, we've learned from the evidence text, bullet defects, right? That, that, that's one of the things, yes. Okay. And were you able to, at some point in time, determine what the perimeter was of the final crime scene? Myself, no. I didn't do that. Crime lab and patrol kept pushing it out. When they, when they would find one case and they would put the next one and the next one until they, they got a handle on where everything was or where we perceived everything to be. Did you go out there and personally look at the casings? Not each and every one, but I did go out there and look at the crime scene. I did you? go out there and determine which casing was where and what happened. Not, not, not trying to put that on you. But did you then proceed out of 2704 Badgett and walk up Goins and look at the littering of brass casings? Yes, yes sir. Did you see the maroon van? Uh, again, I, I wasn't looking at the maroon van, but from, from the video and, or excuse me, from the pictures, it, re it, it refreshes from my memory that it was there. I, I'm not... It's not what I ask you. It's yes or no, Your Honor, and then he can explain. So, is it fair to say that no, you didn't see it, and it was there to be seen? That that's where I'm going. It's yes or no, and then you can explain, sir. That, that is a compound question. Yes no. You don't recall seeing it that night. No, I don't recall seeing the van that night. And if there was a bullet defect in the van there that night. It would have been there to be seen, wouldn't it? Objection. He says he didn't see. You remember seeing it. When was the crime scene at Lonsdale cleared? <clears throat> I, I can't answer that question because during the course of the investigation, my focus was turned towards the victim and witnesses. And we took them back to the police department and we then went there and started interviewing them. Who clears a crime scene? Uh, it's usually crime lab or the last people on the scene because that's their job to gather as much evidence as they can. And when they deem that they're finished collecting all that evidence, taking all those photographs, collecting whatever they can, the, the crime scene is there for, you know, taking that. And you took all of the young people that were there, with the exception of Vontae Patrick that came down later, back to or had their family members transport them to the Knoxville Police Department to conduct interviews about this Lonsdale shooting. That is correct. And as a part of your investigation, you prepared lineups with my client, Christopher Bassett's photograph contained therein. Yes, that was prepared. And that's already been filed as an exhibit. Yes, it has been. And not a single one of the folks that you took or interviewed relative to this investigation of Lonsdale ID'd Mr. Bassett, did they? That is correct. <clears throat> now, relative to the investigation at Lonsdale, you've already gone back to the police department. You're busy with your other violent crimes investigators interviewing witnesses, correct? For, I'm, I'm sorry, I lost After it. Lonsdale. Yes, from Lonsdale, she went back to the police department to interview witnesses and victims. Okay, and you're conducting those uh, interviews and at what point in time do you get a call about another issue, and I'm talking about the Green Hills issue? That would have been after the, you know, right around the 2, 2 a.m. mark in the morning on the 18th. Did you then proceed to leave yourself or with another investigator and go to Green Hills? Yes, uh, again, me and my two partners went to Green Hills. And at that point in time, you came in touch with Mr. Bassett, right? Yes, sir. And he was speaking with Officer Mays or was in close proximity to Officer Mays, correct? That is correct. That's the young female officer that 
was up here earlier, right? Yes. And at some point in time, you ask, were you in that car to which he responded? And when I say that car, just so we're clear, the black BMW. Yes, that's what the car I was referring to. Okay, I know. And when you ask him, that question was directed to the black BMW. That is correct. Okay. And he answered affirmatively. He said yes. Yes. And then you said, put him in a car. And by that you meant put him in a Knoxville Police Department car, correct? Yes. Because you were going to question him at that point in time. That is correct. And subsequent to that time, you then spent some more time at Green Hills. Is that fair to say? Yes, it is. And just so that we're clear relative to this time that you spent at Green Hills, Mr. Morton asked you about some videos, right? Of Green Hills, the security camera footage? Yes. Okay. And you see a black BMW. Yes, sir. A gold and... You said gold or silver. It's gold or silver. I, I'm not going to hold you to it, but it, there's a gold or silver Cadillac. That's correct. And then there is an Acura. Right? Wasn't there an Acura? Did you mention a suspect car? If you're speaking about the Acura, the Acura came from when officers were at the the other house, uh, Mr. Bass's house, uh, and uh, the two of them came down to the dead end, and for, uh, I apologize, I can't remember that street. And that's where that Acura came from, one of those two, the, the black BMW and Acura. All right, I just want to clarify that. So we know then about three cars, right? We know about a black BMW, gold and silver Cadillac, and this Acura, right? Objection. If we if, clarify, what, clarify what time. Is I, I'll be glad to. Relative to this Green Hills investigation, in the approximate time of Green Hills, we're concerned with a black BMW, a gold and silver Cadillac, and an Acura. Through the investigation, those, those cars were learned, and yes, the, the, those are the cars concerning that, that is. And you reviewed the video at Green Hills and you pointed out this is the suspect's car, one of the cars that was leaving, correct? That's correct. And you said car, right? Car. It, it's a car, yes sir. I, I, I'm, I, the, the point will become, okay. I, I, I want you and I to have that dialogue. It wasn't a sport utility. Uh, again, we're, 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 we're getting into an investigation about an open homicide. Your, your Honor, if you could instruct him to just answer my question because it's going to tie in later. I want just an answer. It was a car. It wasn't a sport utility. Oh, it was, it was a car. I'm not saying it was a sport utility. I'm not saying it wasn't. A, I don't, I don't understand. Okay. All right. So the suspect car, you see it leaving. Yes, sir. Okay. Then you also were able to get some information relative to folks firing what appeared to be a gun, correct? In, in, from the video, yes, sir. Okay. As we stand here today, <coughs> no one's charged with the death of Brandon Perry, are they? It is an open homicide that I'm still currently working, yes, sir. So the answer is yes. And you actually have a statement from an individual that tells you who. <laughs> have you continued the investigation of Mr. Perry? Absolutely. Relative to Mr. Perry's homicide. Absolutely. Okay. Have you followed up every lead and every uh, information that you've got? I think I have. Now, when you are at Green Hills and you've had Mr. Bassett transported down to the police facility, what time do you get down to the police facility? I, I don't have that mark. I don't know what time I got there. Okay. You didn't commence his interview until 522 in the morning, did you? That, that's, that would be correct. 
approximately. I mean, I get it maybe a second or two off. Stamp on the video is what time I would have back and started. And if we look at Patrol Officer May's video, we can determine that Mr. Bassett was taken into custody sometime after two o'clock and after this Green Hills incident that we've seen the video of, right? That'd be correct. So he'd been sitting down there some three hours, give or take, before you ever came in there and had a discussion with him. That would be correct. And you talked about the techniques that you used and you used the term minimize, right? And gave some examples. That, that, that would be correct. Right? You also use what we call lies. You lie to potential criminal defendants, don't you? Yes, I absolutely do. And you told a lot of lies, didn't you? I don't know what a lot of lies is, but I did lie. Okay, well, I, I consider 10 or more a lot of lies. Subject, Your Honor, to the same. What Mr. Jones thinks. All right, so as you're telling him these lies, you also, one of the techniques that you do is you suggest answers because you give potential criminal defendants alternatives, don't you? Alternatives, yes. All right. And that's what we call suggesting an answer. Were, or was Brandon on the street or was he on the yard? I object. Uh, another compound. What, what's that's the basis? What we, he's testifying. He's asked compound questions. Right, you suggest answers, don't you? Yes. Sometimes it's do you have this kind of gun or this kind of gun? Right. Or are you in the yard or was Brandon on the street? Right? Correct. And what you're trying to do is get them, because you know they want to get out of there, to agree with that in some form or fashion. Right? It's what you're taught. I, I don't know what he means by agree. I, I just don't know. Well, you want him to say yard or street, because if he says something else, you're going to go, no, 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 no. That's where you're going to get in trouble. That's where you're going to dig a hole. That's what you're taught to do, isn't it? And not necessarily what, how, how he's characterizing it. If I say yard or street, he could have said sidewalk. I was just giving him which one, not saying... And you continue to... Your Honor, he's not finished his answer. Are you there? I am not, sir. Go ahead. You continue to give alternatives then when you suggest <coughs> and you question in this manner. Yes. And that's what you did with Christopher Bassett. You continued to minimize, lie, and suggest answers, didn't you? I, I did suggest answers. I gave him alternatives. And you also told him that in your opinion, as an investigator, that Brandon Perry went out there to do something bad and that he shot that child, didn't you? I never used the word child, but... Well, I, I don't know the exact descriptor, but that young black male, whatever you described him as, that's the language you use, isn't it? What, what would have been in the video or during the interview is the word I would have used, but in gist, that's a yes. Because you believed Brandon Perry shot that young man, didn't you? Again, we would go with the minimalization of if you're a bankrupt. Your Honor, that's a yes or a no. I'm going to... I'm going to sustain your objection. You need me to answer it first, yes or no, and then you can explain it. If you can answer it. Based upon the information you have, you framed your care, your question in that manner because you believed Brandon Perry shot that young man. I didn't know Brandon Perry shot. No, I don't, I don't know if Brandon Perry shot that man or not, but he was part of the group that did. Why did you repeatedly say it? You said it on at least five occasions in that video. I did to minimize Mr. Bassett's uh, involvement in the crime. And it's much like if you're a bank robber and you have a getaway car driver. The mm -hmm. getaway car driver is just as responsible for that bank robbery as the guy who goes in there with you. You were apprised that Mr. Bassett had something wrong with his right hand. Yes, he told me that it was injured in some way, yes. Actually, at the very beginning of the video, you asked him about it. You said what happened, and he told you what happened, didn't he? Right, again, he told me he was, he, he was injured. But you observed it on your own 
that he had something wrong with his hand. Why would you have asked about him otherwise? You observed it. I, again, I don't, please watch the video again. I don't recall it. I, I mentioned it first where he did. I, I just don't recall. You don't recall. So whatever the video says, it is. Okay. And relative to your interview of Mr. Bassett, what Mr. Bassett says is he didn't want to feel like a bitch. You recall that? During, during the interview, he did, did say that, yes. Right. Repeatedly told you that he was in the back and that Brandon started shooting. That's correct. That, that's his characterization. And that he started running. First one to start running. Uh, Mr. Bassett, that, yes. Not, I'm not talking about Mr. Perry. I'm, my questions are relative to this gentleman right here. Yes, sir. Okay. And that Mr. Bassett started running and that he didn't know what the other people did after that. Isn't that what he said? After that, yes, sir. Okay. He told you that it was hard for him to shoot a gun because his hand was dislocated and broken. Yes, sir. But he also said he shot it. He said he shot five times in the air, didn't he? Upward, yes, sir. Okay. And you said to him, Brandon got you involved in something, right? That's correct. And he also, by he, I'm talking about Chris Bassett, he told you about, he thought Jasmine Mason had something to do with this whole Evening's events, right? I, I, if you're referring back to the Lonzo, because that's where I thought we were. I, I'm, I'm talking about Western Heights, Lonsdale, and Green Hills. He never meant that. As far as I recall, he never mentioned Jasmine being involved in the Lonsdale shooting at all. The only name that's consistent throughout Western Heights. Lonsdale and Green Hills is Brandon Perry. That would be correct. And Brandon Perry's girlfriend is Jasmine Mason. Yes. And this man told you relative to the Green Hills homicide that he thought Jasmine had set Brandon Perry up, right? In the Green Hills in the Green Hills context. Yes. Okay. Now, having been an investigator for how long? I've been an investigator I've, I've roughly 20 years. You are familiar with all sorts of questioning techniques and ways to talk to folks, right? I, I would like to think so, but... You're likewise familiar with all sorts of scientific equipment technology and testing that you have at your disposal as an investigator with the Knoxville Police Department. Some but not all. And that's why we have forensic folks, correct? That is correct. You trust the forensic folks to go in and obtain information for you to use in your investigation, right? That would be correct. And in fact, in this case, you asked for a GSR of Christopher Bassett, right? I did. And you called in a evidence technician, I believe you used the name Cox, who has subsequently retired from KPD to conduct this test, right? That is correct. And that's a copy of that test, right? The, what we filed as far as not the test, but the swabs. It, it's not a copy. That is the, the, the swabs that he took from so uh, Mr. This here, which is listed as exhibit number, I believe it's 570. Those are the actual gunshot residue swaps. That is the actual, there's no copy in there. That, those are the actual ones. The physical ones. Yes, sir. All right. So that being said, we, we asked an evidence tech earlier relative to this. Uh, there were plenty of those tests, those kits, available at the Knoxville Police Department, correct? It, he said that, yes. 
Okay. Well, you're an investigator. I, I don't know how many we have. If we have, you know, a stockpile or not. I well, did anybody come in there on December 17th or December 18th, Investigator Leffler, and say, we're running short, you can only do one? No. Okay. So that being said, you took a number of folks into the question. That's correct. How many GSR tests did you request evidence text to perform? Uh, just the one on Mr. Bass. Out of all of these people in three separate shooting scenes, you only asked for one GSR, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. You subsequently, of course, when did you get the Green Hills video? Uh, again, I didn't make a notation of it. It's clear somebody else was out there shooting a gun, wasn't it? That's correct. And of all of the folks that were talked to at Green Hills, and I'm including, did you, why didn't you do one on Larry North? Uh, there, there was no indication that he was involved in the Lonsdale shooting. I did not know about the shooting you know, going towards the Green Hills entrance exit, but there's no indication at that point that he was involved in, in the shootings at all. Why didn't you do one, and I'm not implying anything, just a matter of course, on anyone at the Lonsdale shooting? Because the, the victim witnesses that we had, there was no indication whatsoever that they had a gun, used a gun, fired a gun, but we'll never know, will we? Because you didn't do a test. You didn't request an evidence tech to perform an analysis and a swabbing that they could have done. How long does it take? You, you saw Mr. Bassett being done. How long does it take? Two or three minutes? It, it, it doesn't take very long at all. And you didn't do it? No, I did not request that the on, kids on, on the back porch have a GSR done. After being shot at. No. On Richard Williams? What about him? Richard Williams, I did not get to talk to Richard Williams until two days after the one day. Why not? Because he was no longer on the scene when I got to Green Hills. Uh, he, he, he was not placed in a police vehicle. He left. So, all we've got is one GSR. And just to be clear, in that entire video, which video, sir? What we just saw with Mr. Bassett. Okay. The word "gang" is only mentioned one time, and it's actually mentioned is somebody a member of a gang, and it's referred to Brandon Perry, and the answer is negative, isn't it? I'm sorry, I don't recall that specific question. But if it's in the video, and that's what it said, that would be the correct answer. Right. And so, if you thought this was gang activity, certainly as a seasoned investigator, you would ask somebody those questions, wouldn't you? You'd have said, is this gang activity? Is this East-West? You didn't do it, did you? Apparently not, no. Now, in the video, other than seeing people get into cars, Which video are we I'm sorry, and you're right, you're right, in the Green Hills surveillance videos, yes, sir. you can't tell who's who in those videos, can you? Uh, I cannot, no. Okay. And you said that they appeared to be in dark clothes in that video, right? It appears so, yes. Did you look at the BMW in the video? Yes, sir. Did you notice a difference between the clothes color and the BMW? I, I, I'm not well, sure. the BMW, I mean, just to me, looked black I object to what Mr. Jones. I, well, I, 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 I don't know. Really 
The BMW looked black. The general asked you about clothes. The BMW's color didn't change. Will you agree with me? I think it was a black BMW, yes. <clears throat> but it's your testimony that the people that got in that car were in dark clothes. That, that would be correct. Now, <coughs> the invest excuse me, the interview actually from I shouldn't say interview. From the time Mr. Bassett was brought and placed in police custody until the time that you concluded with him was about five and a half hours, correct? Yes. You were in and out of the room several times. That's correct. You let him sit in there and percolate, right? Objection, Your Honor. What, what do you call that technique? What I call that technique is I was interviewing other people and I did not get to Mr. Bassett until that time. Okay. Did it look like anybody, uh, these clothes that we're talking about at Green Hills, when the folks came back, did it look like they were in the same clothes? Or could you tell? It appeared so. That they were in the same clothes? Yes, sir. And after the car is struck and runs into the building at Green Hills, after the shooting. Yes, sir. And it goes to the field and hits the park building. Yes, sir. Right. You see a bunch of folks running around, correct? And see some come out of the actual apartment or out of a door. I don't know if he come out of an apartment, but come out of the building, right? You'll see two people exit the, the BMW after the accident, and one goes into the building, and you see another one run up uh, towards the parking lot, and then you see people come out of the apartment building and then you'll see people run down from the, the parking lot down to the BMW. And you don't know who any of these folks are? I, Mr. Bassett uh -huh. stated that he was one of those people. Absent his statement, you don't know who these other people are that are running around? That would be correct. Okay. Absent the statements. Okay. And Mr. Bassett told you that he was tending to his cousin and you actually see a man reaching in on the driver's side in the video, don't you? Yes, you do. Okay. Does the name Kurt come up in your investigation? You Just the name Kurt. 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 Either C U R T or K U R T. It doesn't register. <coughs> okay. If it was one of the more prevalent names it would register with you then as the investigating officer. Fair to say? Nothing further. All right, folks, we're going to give Ms. Lee and Mr. Rodman an opportunity to cross the campus to the best area left. But let's go ahead and take a recess. We'll leave up with your chair. I'll see you in about 10 minutes. I've got a 
team guide with us. I don't know. Um, it might be. It might be a little bit long. I've got four different reports. Uh, well, let's see how long. Just sure. stick around. Let's see how long. I have ten minutes. Recess. Mm -hmm. Just have a few questions for you. Um, Investigator Loeffler, uh, do you know who shot Miss Barry? No, I do not. So that crime is unresolved. It is still an open investigation. Okay. And uh, going back to when you were in interviewing Mr. Uh, Bassett and you said Brandon killed somebody in Lonsdale uh, and you also said he didn't mean to, he meant to score some kids and I know Brandon did it. When you said those things, is that because you believe that to be true? I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you okay. meant what the kids. Okay, yes. You, you made a statement that said he didn't mean to, he meant to score some kids. I uh, was scared, maybe? Scared, I'm sorry. Scared, I'm sorry. Scared. Did you did you believe those to be true when you said that to Mr. Bassett? Uh, no, I did not. Okay. That was part of your questioning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And did Mr. North tell you what type of gun he had? In Green Hills? Larry? Yes. Uh, when I questioned Larry, Larry said he did not have it. Okay. Mr. North told you, he never told you he ever had a gun? At any time? Uh, during, during my line of questioning with Mr. North, uh, I, I don't know if I ever asked him if he ever had a gun. I was more specific towards this, this incident. And he, he indicated he did not have it. Okay. And do you know in Green Hills who was driving that Acura? <coughs> I, I, I think it's two stacks not in evidence. It wasn't. Yeah, it's just an Acura. Well, I don't think two stacks are an Acura in Green Hills. Uh, That's I, the place. Yeah, I see. I, okay, I was just making nice well, an objection. You can rephrase it. Okay. I believe Mr. Jones asked him about an Acura. Yeah, and he said, he, did, he said that was that. The residence where they're looking for Mr. Bass and the police call yeah, is up there. And um, when you interviewed Mr. Patrick, Devonte Patrick, yes, and he told when he was talking about the person that he saw that came up to him. Yes, okay. And when he told you he came up to his nose. Okay. Did he tell you he was standing on the porch? Well, during, during the interview, that, that's where he said he was at the time. Mr. Patrick, did he tell you when this person came up to his nose, when he was telling you that he came up to his nose, was he saying, I was standing on the porch? 
uh, again, during the interview, that's, that's where Mr. Patrick said he was. I, I don't know if I ever clarified that he was here and the, the suspect that he saw was on the sidewalk below him. Okay. So were you looking for someone who was shorter? I, I, I will tell you the, the description that I had at the time was, was a light-skinned black male with chin hair, mustache, thick eyebrows, and he described him about being 17 years old. And when is the first time that you knew that Devontae Patrick identified Mr. Colbert? It was quite some time later, and I, I learned that through the DA's office. Okay, so the DA, DA, DA's office told you that Mr. Patrick identified Mr. Colbert? That, that, that is correct. Okay, and did you ever talk to Mr. Patrick after that time? Uh, yes, yes I did. Okay. Did he come in to see you or did you go to see him? I believe it was a telephone interview because Mr. Patrick wasn't in town at the time. So you did a telephone interview with Mr. Patrick? Yes. And do you recall when that was? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I do not. Okay. Was it in 2017? I want to say yes, it was because I, I had only learned about uh, Mr. Colbert being identified. I want to say early in 2017, maybe mid 2017. Okay. Do you know when Mr. Colbert was uh, indicted? I, I don't have the, the, that date. But it wasn't in 2015. No. It wasn't in 2016. I don't believe it was. Okay. Would it be fair to say that he wasn't indicted until after the interview with Mr. Patrick? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Mr. Patrick was the night of. Okay. But I mean, you said that you did that telephone interview with Mr. Patrick in 2016. 17, I'm sorry. I want to say sometime in 2017. If that's okay. the interview that we're talking about, yes. We, I, I don't believe we went forward with Mr. Corey until after that. Okay. So it would be fair to say he wasn't indicted until after that telephone interview? That would be correct. In 2017? Uh, again, I, I, I do apologize. Okay. I wish I had been here. Okay. Uh, I, I just don't think so. Okay. okay. And when is the first time you uh, watched that rap video? When I was told about it through the DA's office, that that's where Mr. Uh, Patrick identified Mr. Okay. And, but when is the first time you watched that video? I'm not sure if it was the same day I was notified by the DA, uh, DA's office about um, Mr. Patrick identifying uh, Mr. Colbert, who was. It was sent to me in an email, and I, I shortly thereafter, okay. uh, again, I, I don't know, but I watched the video before I talked to Mr. Pack. Okay, is that the first time you knew about a video? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Did you ever talk to Mr. Walker about that video? I'm not sure who Mr. Walker is right now. Okay, you don't know who Tom Walker is? Oh, okay. Investigator yes. Walker would count. Uh, no, no, I do not. And did Mr. Patrick ever tell you the guy that he was talking to that he identified had a gun? If I'm not mistaken, uh, I believe he said he saw uh, a, a gun in his, in his waistband, if I'm not mistaken. Are you sure about that? Or are you? Oh, I'm not 100% positive. But it, you can't remember? Right off hand, no, but for some odd reason, now that you ask me this question, it clicks that I'm going to say he saw them. But you heard Mr. Patrick testify? That's correct. Okay. And Mr. Patrick didn't say that when he was on the stand? 
No, me llama. I could have just a minute, you know. Mr. Williams, uh, you did interview Mr. Williams close close in time to the December 17th date, 18th date, correct? And uh, he actually voluntarily came down and spoke with you that day, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And he told you on that day that he was not in Lonsdale on the December 17th date? Uh, he, he said he did not go into Lonsdale. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have to do. What did Mr. Williams say about where he had been that day? Uh, Mr. Williams stated that he had been with Brandon Perry and Richard Williams all day. That he did go to, he was notified about the Dallas shooting, and he went to the Dallas shooting with, with uh, Mr. Bassett. Um, and from there, they went to Green Hills. And then from there, uh, they spent the rest of the day together, and then he, he talks uh, a little bit about the shooting. Acting. So he's with Mr. Bassett all day after the Dallas shooting? That's what he indicated, yes. That's all. Wouldn't have been all day, actually. That shooting, the Dallas Street shooting, <coughs> is the 7 o'clock shooting, approximately, right? That's correct. Okay. So this all day dialogue, as far as being afterwards, you get there's only, what, five hours left in the day? Yes, sir. Okay. And relative to um, the discussions uh, that you had concerning this rap video. The police department didn't come up with the rap video. The attorney general's office came up with the rap video, right? I, I don't know what he means by come up with the rap Well, you're the lead investigator, right? But I, they... Yes or no? What do you mean by come up with? I go, we'll, we'll back right up and I'm going to take you right there. Okay. You're the lead investigator with the Knoxville Police Department assigned to investigate these cases, right? That is correct. That being said, you are the channel that all of the information gleaned by the Knoxville Police Department employees, forensics, all of the services that are available, patrol, come through you because you're the investigator, right? That is not necessarily true. We work as a team. Um, Who maintains the team notebook? It comes to a certain point where anything that comes in goes to the, the district attorney's office, like any TBI results, anything like that. I, I directly give to them, or they have the ability to look up those results themselves. Who were the three investigators, yourself, and who were the other two? Investigator Cook and Investigator Willock. All right. Did Investigator Cook or Willock bring a video to you? A video or rap video? Oh, the rap video. No. These folks did. The Attorney General's office. They, they told me about it. That's what, they, that's what I'm saying when I say who came up with the rap video deal. It didn't come from KPD. It came from the Knox County Attorney General's office, didn't it? Again, I, I, I did not know what he meant by come up, but yes, I was presented to or told about it through the district attorney's office. Nothing further. Thank you, sir. That's the I have nothing else. That's right. That's from general. Thank you, investigator. Let me have a short discussion conversation with lawyers, please don't go in.
You can do that, right? You sign a swear or affirm the test you're about to give, the case now on top of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth, nothing about it. Have a seat, special agent. Hello. Give us your name, please. Marla Newport. For the record, can you spell your first name? It's M A R L A N E W P O R T. And uh, where are you employed? I'm employed at the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, Knoxville Crime Lab. How long have you been employed there? Uh, six years. What do you do there? I am a special agent forensic scientist assigned to the Forensic Biology Unit. Uh, what is your educational background that allows you to hold that position? <coughs> I have a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Tennessee in Biological Studies. I also completed the in-house training that was set forth by the TBI. And have you uh, testified and been accepted as an expert in forensic biology in the past? Yes, I have. We were offered moral of import as an expert in forensic biology. Any objection? I have no objection to no this report. All right, folks, once again, the court is going to recognize this witness as an expert for her area of expertise in forensic biology which allows her to render her opinion within that area of expertise. Once again, just because she renders her opinion, it's not, you are not bound to accept it. It's your job to judge the way incredibly she gives her investment, but she is an expert in doing Before we talk about your eight reports here, uh, explain to us, uh, and basically, this is going to be all negative, basically, yeah, basically. but we still need to go through this. Uh, explain to us the process you go through when you're trying to get DNA off of an item. And the first thing we want to do is look for biological fluids, such as blood, semen, or saliva. If fluids are present, we will take a portion of the evidence that contains those fluids through a DNA process. We separate it from other cellular materials we're only interested in the DNA. We then quantitate it to see how much is available, and then we make copies of the areas of the DNA that we're interested in. These areas are unique to individuals. They're not areas that tell us um, hair color or eye color or anything like that. They are areas that are more rare and unique. And then we will run it through and obtain a DNA profile. And so you'll have a profile on a specific item. I take it, do you also have to have the standard from individuals that you're comparing against? Yes, we get what's called known standards. And they come in and um, a law enforcement officer takes these standards from a known individual. We are aware of who they come from, and then we take the question evidence, the profiles obtained from it, and we compare it to the known standards to see if they match or they do not match. And then after uh, you do that, you prepare a report. I do. All right, let's start going through uh, the first report here. Let's talk about the swabs for the 9 millimeter pistol. Show you, um, it's going to be the report from 926 16. If I can show you exhibit 444 and ask if you recognize exhibit 444. Yes, that is an exact copy of my report. So explain to us uh, what this report tells us. Uh, this report I was submitted, uh, KPD submitted swabs from the grip of a 9mm pistol, swabs from the trigger of a 9mm pistol, and swabs from the magazine of a 9mm pistol. So I perform DNA on this. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we first want to look for biological fluids. There were no biological fluids on this piece of evidence, so we are looking for what's called touch DNA, skin cells that are left behind on an object. Um, and for this, for the swabs from the grip of the pistol, no DNA profile was obtained. Swabs from the trigger of the pistol, no DNA profile was obtained. And swabs from the magazine of the 9mm pistol, the limited DNA profile obtained is only a value for exclusionary purposes. So in order uh, for you to make an identification, you not only have to have the presence of DNA, but a sufficient amount? Yes. So are you able to tell us whose DNA is left, who, whether or not there's any DNA left on the 9 millimeter pistol? With the limited amount that was obtained, I was only able to do exclusionary purposes. That's if the standards that came in, I could only say it is not them. And for the standards that were submitted, um, all were inconclusive, meaning I cannot tell if they were there or not. And uh, you could, well, we're going to talk about the standards here in a minute, but standards, did you, did you get standards for Xavier Young Dobson? Get Richard Williams, Xavier Young Dobson, Brandon Perry, and Kipling Colbert. I would like to move that in as exhibit 444. Yeah, Jackson. Right. 444. Exhibit 445. 
looks like this is uh, okay, from October 31st, 2016. Yes, that's a copy of the report that I originated once standards were submitted for comparison. And uh, uh, tell us what uh, what does Exhibit 445 tell us? Uh, 445 says the limited data program obtained is for a value of exclusionary purposes. Results regarding the inclusion of Richard Williams and Xavier and Dawson are inconclusive. All right. I'd like to move that in as Exhibit 445. Objection. No, you're not. Right, now let's go to the 40 calendar. Exhibit 446, September 26, 2016. Yes. And what, you recognize Exhibit 446? Yes, that is a copy from the report I generated. And tell us what are you examining in uh, Exhibit 446? I examined swabs from the Smith & Wesson 40 caliber handgun. And tell us about your analysis of those swabs. Um, in the envelope, the swabs were broken down into swabs from the handgun, swabs from the magazine, and swabs from 14 rounds. And what did your conclusion tell you in Exhibit 446? For the swabs for the handgun, the DNA profile obtained is consistent with a mixture of at least four individuals, including at least one male. Due to the complexity of the mixture and the unknown number of potential contributors to the profile, the interpretation of this profile is deemed to be inconclusive. What about the swabs from the magazine? The DNA profile obtained is consistent with a mixture of at least four individuals, including at least one male. Due to the complexity of the mixture and the unknown number of potential contributors to the profile, the interpretation of this profile is deemed to be inconclusive. And what about the swabs from the 14 rounds? The limited DNA profile obtained is from an unknown male individual and is only a value for exclusionary purposes. I think that is exhibit 446. Without objection, to 446. What about exhibit 447? 447 is a copy of the report I generated after standards were submitted. <coughs> this is going to be October 31st, 2016. Uh, tell us uh, about your conclusions. This is the only um, profile from the first report that I had anything to compare to. That's the only one I've talked about in this one. And the limited profile obtained is from an unknown male individual and is only a value for exclusionary purposes. Results regarding the inclusion of Richard Williams and Zadion Dawson are inconclusive. This is exhibit 447. Not objection, exhibit 447. Let's now go to uh, your analysis of the black pigs. September 28, 2016, that'd be the first one. Uh, you recognize Exhibit 448? Yes, that is a copy of my report. And uh, what is Exhibit 448? 448 is a report I generated. KPD submitted a black hoodie, the KPD marker number 9, and they also submitted a second black hoodie, which was marked KPD marker number 10. What did your uh, analysis Okay. For this one, um, there was bodily fluid present, so I first screened it for the presence of blood. There were multiple areas on the first hoodie. The right sleeve area, presumptive test indicated the presence of blood. Further in testing indicated the presence of human hemoglobin, which is a component of human blood. The DNA profile obtained is consistent with a mixture of at least two individuals, including at least one male. The major contributor profile is from unknown male number one. Due to the limited minor contributor profile obtained, interpretation of the minor contributor profile is inconclusive. The back left side of the hoodie, presumptive test indicated the presence of blood. Further testing indicated the presence of human hemoglobin, which is a component of human blood. The DNA profile obtained is consistent with a mixture of at least three individuals, including at least one male. Due to the complexity of the mixture, interpretation is going to be inconclusive. I also performed what we call wearer's DNA. I sprayed the inside wrist area and the neck area and swabbed it, so we want to determine who was wearing the hoodie. <clears throat> the DNA profile obtained is consistent with a mixture of at least two individuals, including at least one male. The major contributor profile is from unknown male number two. Due to the limited minor contributor profile obtained, interpretation of the minor contributor profile is deemed to be inconclusive. For the secondary hoodie, which was marked KPD marker number 10, 
The left sleeve area, presumptive test indicated the presence of blood. Further testing indicated the presence of human hemoglobin, a component of human blood. The DNA profile obtained is consistent with a mixture of at least two individuals, including at least one male. The major contributor profile is consistent with unknown male number one. Due to the limited minor contributor profile, interpretation is deemed to be inconclusive. The front right side of the hoodie, presumptive test indicated the presence of blood. Further testing indicated the presence of human hemoglobin, which is a component of human blood. The DNA profile is consistent with unknown male number one. The hood, presumptive test indicated the presence of blood. Further testing indicated the presence of human hemoglobin, a component of human blood. The DNA profile obtained is consistent with a mixture of at least two individuals, including at least one male. The major contributor profile is consistent with unknown male number one. Due to the limited minor contributor profile, interpretation of the minor contributor is deemed to be inconclusive. And once again, I was looking for who wore the sweatshirt. I mainly focused on the wrist area due to the fact that the hood was positive for blood. The limited DNA profile obtained is from an unknown male and is only a value for exclusionary purposes. Objection is 449. 449 is going to be from October 10, 2016. Okay. Yes, it is a copy of my report. And what is exhibit 449? That was a report I generated for the unknown male individual. It was entered into a database to see if we could determine if there was another case that it might get to. Um, it was, it did not get to any other case. Okay, then it's exhibit 449. That is a copy of the report I generated after receiving the blood standard from Brandon Perry. Can you tell us what exhibit 450 is? Once I received his blood standard, I compared it to all the unknown profiles that were found in the first report. For the right sleeve area, a major contributor matched Brandon Perry. The probability of randomly selecting an individual with the same DNA profile as the major contributor is one in a number greater than the current world population for the African American, Caucasian, and Southwestern Hispanic populations. For the inside wrist and neck area, the wearer's DNA, the DNA profile is a mixture of two individuals, including one male. The major contributors from an unknown male. Therefore, Brandon Perry and Richard Williams are excluded as contributors to this profile. <coughs> For the secondary hoodie, the left sleeve, the major contributor profile matched Brandon Perry. And once again, we were we obtained world population stats with that. For the front right side, the DNA profile matched Brandon Perry with world pop stats. For the hood, the DNA profile matched, the major contributor matched Brandon Perry with world population stats. In the inside wrist area, the limited DNA profile obtained is from a male individual and is only at value for exclusionary purposes. Results regarding the inclusion of Brandon Perry are inconclusive. However, Richard Williams can be excluded as a contributor. That's from 450. And lastly, this is from June 23rd, 2017. Yes, that is the copy of the report I generated after receiving a buckle standard from Kiplin Colbert, swabs from the grip of the Ruger 357, and the swab of the driver's side rear door. And what were your results? For the inside wrist and neck area of the first hoodie, the DNA profile, the major contributor is still from an unknown male, and Kiplin Colbert was excluded as being a contributor. For the inside wearer's DNA of the secondary hoodie, um, Kiplin Colbert was excluded as a contributor. For the swabs from the grip of the 357, the DNA profile obtained is consistent with a mixture of at least four individuals, including at least one male. Due to the complexity of the mixture and the unknown number of potential contributors, the interpretation of this profile is deemed to be inconclusive. For five, uh, the swab from the driver's side rear door, presumptive test indicated the presence of blood. Testing for the presence of human hemoglobin, a component of human blood, was not performed due to a limited sample. The DNA profile obtained is consistent with a mixture of at least two individuals, including at least one male. The major contributor profile is from an unknown female individual. 
Therefore, Brandon Perry, Richard Williams, and Kitlin Colbert are excluded as being a contributor to the major profile. Due to the limited minor contributor profile, interpretation is deemed to be inconclusive. I'd like to move into evidence exhibit 450. <coughs> Passwords. Good afternoon. I just have one question for you. So, in your test that you performed, there was no matches for Mr. Culbert. No, no, it's not. Okay, thank you. While you were running these tests, you had developed a standard for Richard Williams, is that correct, a DNA standard? And so when you were testing all of these items, you were testing it against Richard Williams' DNA, is that correct, to see if it matched? Yes. Okay. And so when you have an unknown male, does that exclude the, the folks that you have standards from? Yes, but it's still listed as an unknown male. That means to this day we're still unaware of who that individual is. And you had a standard from Richard Williams at that point in time, so he's excluded from that if it says unknown male. Yes. And, and he's not found, you do not have a DNA match for Richard Williams on any of the items that you tested, is that correct? Yes, there's no, there's no inclusion. However, there were a couple that were inconclusive. Okay, thank you. No. Governor, may I approach? I'm going to look at a couple of. Sure. Uh, No, I did not receive a standard from Mr. Bassett. Who, who do you get those standards from? We get standards from the law enforcement agency that submits the evidence. If a man's in jail, in custody, the investigator could have certainly got you a sample, could it? I'm unaware of any type of things they have to do to get standards. Okay. Yeah. But you certainly had samples on these other gentlemen, right? Yes. Nothing further. Read right. No, you're not. Ms. Lee? No, you're not. Ms. Rogers? No, sir. Thanks, Special Agent. You are reading them. Okay. All right, folks, this looks like a good time to stop. 12 till 5. I'm going to send you home with the same instructions I'm giving you. <coughs> Please do not watch any local media or any news about the case. Avoid social media as well in case there's any uh, discussion. This don't talk about it. Uh, so uh, don't make up your mind yet. We are going to uh, resume the next case in the morning. I've got a short doc tomorrow. Uh, I'll probably get to this case about 9 15, 9 20. So be around you know, 9 o'clock, 9 15 tomorrow. Uh, and that should be plenty of time. Uh, I'm going to send you back to the room for just a minute. I've got an issue I need to address with the attorneys. So I'm not going to release you from the building because she had this won't take too long. I need you to stick around for just a minute. Uh, so go with the, uh, uh, the officers as soon as they tell you you're free to go, you're free to go. All right, I'll see you uh, tomorrow.
Mr. Chair, thank you for stepping in. You just have a seat. One of the chairs is fine right there. Uh, thank you for coming in. I just want to ask a couple questions. Also, Coker inform me that there's been a death in your family. Is that correct? Yes. Sir. I'm very sorry to, to hear that. I know this is not a good time uh, for you. Uh, a couple questions. First, do you think that's going to affect your ability to uh, concentrate? Have you had any difficulty today focusing on the case? No. Sir. All right. Now, and I imagine there's probably going to be some arrangements made with your family. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Are you aware what those are at this time? Not at this time. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to just remain on the jury, uh, continue to participate, continue to focus. If at some time things change uh, and you either have a hard time focusing or you feel like you're going to have to leave to be with your family, please let Officer Coker know that and I'll, I'll talk about it further with you. Okay. Again, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Please, you're, you're free to leave now. Thank you. All right, folks, you can have a seat. Any issues with staying on that? No. Mr. Jones. No, you don't have to I know. So. All right, folks, thanks for your hard work today. Uh, this morning, i got a couple of cases I have to address. I'll be in about 9.15. We can start right now. Of course, that's the jury until 9 o'clock tomorrow.